This is a Galactic Network podcast. The Podcast of Terror is a great podcast. It's covering movies that are not for children, and thus this podcast is not for children. The hosts are two adults who will use bad words from time to time. They'll also spoil movies if that's not your thing. So if you don't like spoilers and you don't want to hear some dirty language or some dirty references to dirty parts of your body, then please, please, please wash your body parts better and do not listen to this show. If you can handle it, and I hope you can because there's a great podcast coming up, then please proceed with Podcast of Terror. Welcome to episode 150 of the uh, Podcast of Terror production of the Galactic Network. We're on this podcast, including show notes, content, information, subscription links. Go to gncast.com slash pod. I'm Matt Stein, Corey will be here shortly. Joining us this week, uh, Jack Bacone, who's been here fucking 15 times, uh, and then his friend and previous guest, Ben Granoff. Um, Ben draws a shitload of really cool cartoons. We'll definitely get into that, but this week we're going to talk about Unbreakable and Split since Glass comes out um, next week. And I just had it. I am drinking a beer that was brewed in 2013. So I got that going for me. Oh, it's like it's a fine wine. It is. It's pretty fucking good. I was scared to drink it in case it sucked. <sighs> and I think my pen just went into the couch. I'll be right back. What? <laughs> okay. I guess while he's getting the pen out of his butt cheeks. How have you been, Ben? Looks like you're busy with your your cartoons and stuff. I'm doing lots of cartooning. Um, I have... uh, I I spent the day um, doing some inking on one assignment and um, laying out another one. I was laying... Our friend Adam Garcia... Mm -hmm wrote this Spider-Man story like 10 years ago for me. And I decided to, to play with it a little bit. Nice. Are you, you, so doing, that's what you, you have like a Comic-Con coming up or something you're doing? Um, I have a small convention. I work with uh, with adults with disabilities and I help them make comics and I take them to conventions. Oh, wow. And that's my job. Yeah, it's a great gig. It's my favorite. Oh, you're a better person than I am. Well, it's, you know, it's what I do. It lets me, it's flexible. I get to freelance and do whatever I need to do around yeah. that. So it's a pretty good deal for me. Nice. Yeah. When is that? Or I guess when that is your next one? That one's, in, that one's in two weeks, and then we're trying to do the big alternative press one here in New York, and that's in April. Oh, nice. Well, be cool. so that one's curated, so we'll see if we get into it. I, I work with some really, really talented people. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sweet. So, so we're doing that. And then I have a, a book that I'm like just the pitch is just wrapping up, so that's good. Nice. So it should move on, on to the next. Um who's in my lap. Jesus Christ. Uh but I did ironically find a real pen uh that I didn't know was in my couch. I also found my just <sighs> 64 gig flash drive that I uh, hadn't lost for a year, and I found a 3.52. Looks like a another 3.5 millimeter adapter. There's treasure everywhere. <laughs> I did cut myself on some rusty nails, so uh, <laughs> All the treasure it'll be my final back. show. <laughs> hey, Corey. Hey, Jack. Cheers, fellas. Hey, Corey. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, Ben? I'm good, man. How are you? Are, are you guys both in Wisconsin now? Is that is that the living arrangements? <laughs> Practically. Where, where do you live? I, I just moved from Northern California to Michigan. In Michigan. Okay, so you're close. Hell of a change, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a it's been an interesting adjustment. All right. Did it snow oh, by I- you last night? Oh shit! Yes. Oh, okay. It's been snowing for the last 
I mean, it it stopped at some point in the middle of the night, uh, but last night and a little bit of the night before, it, it was just coming down completely yesterday. Somebody it was beautiful. You got a haircut. I was about to say, it looks awesome. I know when he turned his hat, I couldn't tell if it was pulled back or if it's gone. Mine's gone. That looks good. <laughs> I'm. Thank you. I, I still got to figure out what to do with the beard. Well, that's. Yeah, I don't know. Don't ask me. I look homeless. Well, I think you're. Once I'm employed, I can start to look homeless again. But yeah, for right now, I have I to fucking make an effort. You you grow facial hair pretty quick though, so I guess if you had to shave it or trim it pretty tight, it wouldn't be a big deal. I had gotten my first professional shave uh, just before I left California. And it was real embarrassing. My wife has only seen my upper lip twice in our relationship of 20 years. And uh, neither one has been very pleasing for her. So it was Jeez. it was kind of upsetting. And I had to I had to grow that back real, real fast. I, I was like plugging my nose and, and ears and, oh, sure. and blowing, just hoping. <laughs> Grew a second penis. <laughs> um, it's as unimpressive as the first one is, though, so it doesn't matter. How was the shave? I only did it once, and I went. I, so when I lived in the city, I always went to a barber college, uh, where I get four dollar haircuts, and uh, you know they would usually do a pretty bad job. There were students that were learning, um, but it was four dollars, and it was nearby. And usually the teacher would come by and kind of like fix it and like give them pointers. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know why, but at one point I, I always saw it on this menu, and I was like, I want to shave. And the the kid, he was just like, oh, really? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah. And then he's basically like takes out the, the blade. He's holding it as if it's a lightsaber and he doesn't know what, what he's doing. And he puts it to my neck and he's nervous. And now I'm nervous. Oh, and, You've just given him a license to murder. Yeah. And the reason I wanted it is because I, I, I just to this day, after uh, nearly 20 years of shaving, I still do a terrible job and I, I get razor burn really bad on my neck. And uh, yeah, and he, I thought it would be better. And it wasn't. I just he butchered me. The lady was skilled uh so there wasn't any kind of irritation or anything she knew when to go with the grain or whatever uh she just like a lot of haircuts i get she went too short i i'm not very good at describing what i want i put myself in the in the trust of the people that i'm with and uh it did just turned out to be not what i had intended when i went in there but the experience was great and she was very nice and very attentive and the whole thing was was fun. I would do it again, um, but the place that I went to out here, my mom took me to where she gets her hair cut, and it's a bunch of ladies with Midwest hair. <laughs> it was just like, let's just let's just go with what you think is fashionable for a dude around here, and uh, I'll I'll shave when I get home. I'm curious what you consider Midwest hair. That. Short in the back, long bangs looks like they gotta bump it right on the oh. on the crown. That is there were two women of, of probably at least a fifteen year age difference in that place that were both cutting hair that both had that hairstyle. Sounds and there were I think five women working, so it wasn't like it was the greater portion of the women had it, but it was very five noticeable. Women working. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm getting so distracted. You guys, can you guys hear the audio pops that I'm having? No. All right, good. It's dry, they're driving me nuts. I literally turned off the power to my sound system, and I'm still getting them. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask uh, how that was going. Can it's I go driving me nuts. And... I had to watch both movies with them, and I, after trying unsuccessfully to stream them on my iPad and my uh, MacBook Air, uh, and I just, uh, I just, yeah, I just, life is just terrible. But um, wow. what would I want to? Sounds do? great. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say something about the hair, uh, the shave, and I lost it. Fuck. Shit. No, I, I'm, I'm, my brain's good. My brain is just... This, this is awesome. It's just, it's just like meat and fat. Now, there's nothing else there. There's no light. <laughs> meat and fat. Left. There's no light. Um, I totally forgot what I wanted to say about uh, this. By the way, meat and fat is two of my favorite things in the world, so just... <laughs> like, how's, how's my level? I can't feel bad for you with that. Um, I'm trying to open up your YouTube page because I feel bad. I always ignore your chat. Oh, don't worry. Uh, so do I. Is it chat at the same time? They, they, they're fans. Uh, give you super chats. Participate. Jack, can you turn yourself up a little? 
That's why, that's why I was asking how my levels are. Yeah, Beatmaster said great. it. You needed to be better. And you always trust in Beatmaster. And I just don't give a shit about anything anymore. By the way, hi, Beat. Hi, hi Brandon. Uh, where do I go? To go to YouTube? Are we live right now? Yeah. So. Oh, boy. Just keep your clothes on. Or don't. Or don't. Get yeah, I don't care time. anymore. What do we care <laughs> if we get banned? Wait. Take this motherfucker to Twitch. What? <laughs> what, are they the, the terrorists? The people in the chat? <laughs> What's it called? Well, one of them is from a foreign country, so make it that what you will. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Put hello. That wall, wall. That's nice. I have an international. Wow, okay. Yeah, but he's from, he's from Switzerland, so he's pretty much neutral. You never say correctly where wow. he's from. Nope. But I think he's actually from Switzerland, so I think I got it this time. Okay. You know, that's He's from Switzerland, so he's pretty much neutral. Do they you never um, say correctly where he's from. Jack, is that Do you? To... But I think oh, he's actually from Switzerland. I'm on mute. Yeah, I'm yeah. from Switzerland. So ben, are you playing the video? Someone's playing yeah. the video back. Yeah, Ben's playing the video back. Ben, you cannot be unmuted until you mute that fucking video. <laughs> Or just pause the video and you can watch the chat. Or you is can that, that true? Can you do that? Can you, if I pause it, the chat will keep going? Yeah, you yeah. can. I pop the chat out. Ah, fuck yeah, I was right. I told you guys, Beatmasters from Switzerland. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Don't say that though. Don't uh, don't give into it. Don't be right. Don't give him the satisfaction All right. of you knowing where he is. He's actually like telling Crowley Bear you actually know <laughs> what time zone he's in. He's from he's from Singapore. Can you yeah. unmute our guest? Oh shit, sorry. I was trying to uh, I've remembered what no, I wanted to say. I can't unmute him. It won't let me unmute him. <laughs> ben, we can't hear you at the moment. Matt's an idiot. Yeah, Ben, I I muted you, and now it won't let me unmute you. Did... Like I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I was just fucking. He's but a mime at this. How point. does that happen? I don't know. No, like there shouldn't you can't be. Just, like, unmute. unmute. I what I there, to say he about. just did it himself. There he is. There he is. I I, uh, I remember what I wanted to say. I agree with Corey about uh, about not uh, not knowing like how to tell them what kind of haircut. I've never successfully communicated the kind of haircut I get. I just one out of every three or four is the one I wanted and I, I just like I just go with those odds. Uh, there's a great somebody did a great tweet where it's just they they, uh, they butch like barber butches your hair, uh, does awful job, makes you want to kill yourself. Uh, holds up mirror. looks great. thanks. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. right. Take a photo of yourself when you have a good haircut and say, "I know, but it's so you like the guy in the I, photo." I can't do that. It's so awkward and weird. I've gone it's in with weird. photos of celebrities and stuff when I've had like a specific hairstyle, but I found it a lot easier when my wife worked for Alta to just go in when she was working, then she would tell the person how to cut my hair because it doesn't matter what I do; it's never going to be her happy when I get home. <laughs> so if she's at least there for what happens, the blame lands on her, and she won't she won't tell me that she doesn't like it. <laughs> Uh, I just found out from somebody on Twitter. Uh, somebody posted some, something like, "What uh, is 2019 the year men stop getting this haircut? Uh, do, do they know they look like neo Nazis?" And I was offended because that's the haircut I always want that I can never get. It's <laughs> basically like the shaved on the sides, the kind of like not a full Guido fade up, but I, I like to be very short on the sides because yeah. I, I have very curly hair and it grows quicker on the sides because I'm going bald. So I look like Krusty the Clown after six weeks. So I, I, I wanted as short as possible to let the uh, the top keep up. Uh, but apparently that's a neo-Nazi haircut. Actually, you know, Ben was, uh, I was maybe the first person Ben met when he moved to New York City. Uh, when, so he, maybe, when he showed up in his neo-Nazi movement. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what I looked like? Uh, like that was, because that was literally, like that was well, as much Staten Island as I was going to get. Because that was, the, you know, the, from that day forward, I slowly became uh, more uh, gentrified into the rest of the city culture. But that was pro my accent was probably at its thickest. My haircut was definitely at its most guido. I had my silver chain still. I had a little mustache. I want to see that. Do you have pictures? Uh, yeah, I have my NYU ID somewhere probably. Mm. Um. Yeah, and then me and Ben went out for uh, for lunch or dinner uh, within 15, 20 minutes of meeting each other. I and, assume uh, you just went and ate Italian food. <laughs> he spilled soda all over my food. And then uh, he just was like, beepity bobbity boopity. <laughs> no, I was fine. I was like, all right, whatever. He's freaking out. He thought he just made an enemy for life. I made an enemy for life. Welcome to welcome to New York. You're going <laughs> to die here. You're spilling Diet Coke on my burger over here. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> But yeah, me and Ben lived together our first year, uh, freshman year, and uh, I, I love him like a brother. He's amazing. 
So you guys, oh, thank you. You guys gonna kiss real quick or? <laughs> it wouldn't be quick. <laughs> I mean, well, I got time. I'm trying to dig up a fight. I don't know if I'm I, waiting. I, you, you've seen photos of me in high school. I don't need to dig these up. But I want to see full Guido Jack. Like, didn't you see my prom? Uh, Probably. I also saw a weird picture of you dressed up like Robin. I can't unforget that. Or I can't unsee that, that was one. Only a couple of years ago. I, <laughs> doesn't make it any better. I'll send you pictures of me as Robin then. Oh God. <laughs> I imagine you're just you, naked with the see, mask on. <laughs> wait till you see my red hood. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm no, you're not. That's going to show us his night wang. <laughs> Did you know that they're changing Dick Grayson's name in the comics yeah. now? They don't. They feel they finally determined like we can't call him Dick anymore and get away with it. So we're, we're going to. They they wiped his memory and have him redoing his whole life from scratch, and they they want him to be called uh, Rick Grayson instead. What? This can't be real. So well, no. I, I'm wishing for Rick to be the new slang for Wang. <laughs> What's ready? Come on, there's nothing wrong with Dick. Yeah, it's not like it's Keith. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna offend all the Keiths in the audience. I, I no, that's that's crazy. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I will that. offend the Keats. And the, <laughs> Keith has had it too good for too long. <laughs> before, <laughs> okay, so before we lose our entire listener bases of Keats, <laughs> I do want to point out, um, Jack, I know, Ben, do you like football at all? I watched 15 minutes of football today. Okay, so, yeah, it's pretty on par. I know Corey, it's, very, it's Corey's it's favorite Keith. sport. Yeah, it's very Keith of you. <laughs> so the Bears <laughs> lost – last week by one point because their kicker missed the 43 yard field goal yeah so that was terrible yes. so a brewery in chicago basically said come down here saturday kick a 43 yard field goal get free beer for a year what people fucking We're lined good. up for oh, we gotta five get, hours oh, how, how big of a field, field goal 43 yards oh jeff could do that with his eyes closed we gotta get jeff out there well it was he already missed it but everyone missed it was also snowing, oh. and most people like ate shit when they kicked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure Jeff could have you, done you it. Only but get one kick, or can you just yep. like keep nope. going one back. kick? That's it. Yeah, you don't That's even right. get you don't even get to warm up. Like I've never kicked a field goal. No but you also don't have the other team trying to tag you out. No. That's true. You have all the time in the world. You're not against an offensive line that is trying to collectively butt rape you. Move your colon to another portion of your anatomy. Yeah, that with their penis. I, I appreciate this fucking thing for what it is, which is, yeah. yeah, you come down here and show me how you can do it, bitch. <laughs> there was another video I found, and it was, like, people who were watching college football, and it's like, I can make that field goal. So I think it was ESPN. But they flew the people in, and they were like, hey, do you know why you're here? And they're like, no, I have no clue. And then they handed them the tweet, and then they figured out that they were going to have to take the kick. And everyone fucking missed that thing, too. <laughs> also, imagine the physicality of a person who's trying to win free beer for a year has got to be like Captain America levels of uh, of masculinity. Yeah, yeah. There were some <laughs> peak athletes at this event. And you know it's not a real year. I remember when I got a year of internet when I first uh, got 56K, <laughs> and I blew through that shit on South Park chat room <laughs> six months. Well, you know, they say if you get like a year of something, it's usually, you know, like what, a six pack a week. But I think it's from, from the brewery itself, so it might be like two or three porters a week. Oh, Jack salty balls say this internet <laughs> is bullshit. I can't believe I'm not paying for this. <laughs> um, yeah, no. You have previous guest uh, Jeff Wallenek. Uh He's you know he's the kicker for the Predators. He is, he can kick. Uh, he he can do 40, 50 yard field goals. He's he's really talented. Yeah. Well, I mean, he has that soccer background, which I believe helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah and the fact that he actually balls. like kicks field goals. But does he want the free beer for a year, or will he donate it to charity? Like, uh, here's my free year of beer at a local AA or something. <laughs> I could see, see, I could see a year's worth of beer for Jeff being an actual year's worth of beer. Jeff he, doesn't drink can, that much. He can live in moderation. Uh, must be nice. Yeah, well, he, we make him drive everywhere. He's the only one still left to drive, so he can't drink that much. Why don't you just take an Uber? You have those, don't you? Uh, I, yeah, I'd take him. I don't, Jeff would never take him. Why not? Why is Jeff so weird? That, first of all, to Staten Island, it would be like a $150 oh. cab ride. I don't know. Believe me, I've tried. He lives by my father, and uh, it uh, takes me two and a half hours to get there on the holidays. 
Because ah. I, I won't Uber. Yeah, I got to take a train to a bus to a train. Oh, so if you were to drive, how long would that take? From where I am, uh, I live off the BQE, which is the most congested highway in the world. Um, if there's no traffic, half hour, 25 minutes. If there, But normally <laughs> it's more like 50 minutes, hour. Oh, that's not terrible. Sometimes, I mean, it's yeah, not, not bad, good, it's like but... Yeah, yeah, it ranges. Huh. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, see, I got a digital camera in college, so I, uh, I don't really have any photos from high school. Oh, you know where I could show you photos from high school? Oh. Oh, I don't think they exist your, anymore. Your Tumblr? Shit. No, yeah, me and Dan had a, a website for our ske- high school sketch group, uh, but I think after like 15 years, I think sometime what, last year. What was it called? Let me see if I can find it. Oh, uh, You'll never tell me what it is? No, no, we, we, we've we been very careful about that. Oh, fuck, I think I spent some time trying to find it. Um, What is it, a Geocities website? Or is it no, a... It was, uh, a it's I'm not saying Geocities? Yeah, no, it's gone. It's gone. You did it's say gone. Geocities, yeah, exactly. What is it? Is it Geocities or Geocities? <laughs> I feel as well, I, I was being serious. I, I Geocity sounds like a, you like a when you said that. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Ge- Geocity sounds like a like a like an atrocity and a genocide. Exactly. <laughs> I, I like that. I was I was like, wow, there's an even better way to say this stuff. I say I just, uh so I've been so, saying gif. Oh fuck. So with a movie like um, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody or, or Walk the Line, I like to call them biopics as opposed to biopics. See? Because it's too. a biography, it's not a biography. So I, call I them biopics. Uh, it just it sounds it sounds you know more for, for more professional than like biopic. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. So you don't be a dick about how I say yeah. GeoCities? Yeah. No. So no, I mean, I, no. I, but the way I, you said I, it was really, I really enjoy GeoCities. I think that sounds great. See, so yeah, I think it's the way to class it up. <laughs> it's like putting lemon in your water. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to come up with like a WordPress pun. I got nothing. Never mind. Oh, I yeah. I hate WordPress. I have to use it all the time too. <sighs> yeah, I got this updated version at work that's been driving me nuts. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think now they're you're supposed to web design for mobile, which. Ugh. Ugh. Um, I I just tried. To, I get this iPad. I spent a goddamn paycheck on half a paycheck. Uh, and I haven't used it once, and I'm trying to use it. And it really, I, I, my gut was telling me for years I wasn't going to like it. And everybody's like, no, it really, it's great. It's great. It can mostly replace your computer. Did you get the I Pro? Hate it. I hate, no, no, I no. got the six, though, which, which uh, uses the pencil. Because um, that's what I wanted. I want to be able to mark on screen plays. Yeah. Um, and it's just, just like, I just trying to make a copy of the PDF and rename it, like, uh, rename the file because I, you know, so I don't fuck up, fuck up the original uh, while I make my notes. Just that took me like five minutes on the iPad. No, don't don't go off script, Jack. Don't don't take the iPad and expect it to do things that you wanted to do. It's <laughs> you adjusting to how it wants you to do things. That's all it is. It's like being married. <laughs> it's so intuitive. Hold on, yeah. I can find a picture of me, but uh, can I send pictures in this chat now? Right? You can Probably share not. your screen. I'm not gonna do that. Oh, um, oh you don't want it to be on YouTube. Yeah, that's why. Um, anyway, I'm going to send you a screenshot of our door. or part of our door. Uh, me and Ben were always very insistent on decorating our dorm door with art. I mean, everybody was in college in the dorms. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we had a very specific sense of humor that I don't think anybody else appreciated, at least not on our floor. Let me see. I cannot wait. I don't know what it is. I mean, you guys feel for, this is going to take me a couple minutes, so please oh. can, don't, don't stop the show. So, uh, okay, good. Great. Better off telling us not to start the show. Have yeah. you guys seen Glass? Have we started the show? Technically, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You, pre, you pre-introduce us, right? Yeah, I, I do as I little work as possible. Glass comes out on Friday, Ben. On Friday? Yeah. Is it going to be good? I hope so. So uh, I saw a story earlier today that says that the critics are not liking Glass, but a bunch of people who got to go see it in a triple feature, uh, M. Night... Uh, a ding would, dong Yes. Uh, he was there. He, he talked the whole thing up, and then they watched uh, sort of what we're doing, except they got to see the, the third. Uh, they watched Unbreakable, Split, and Glass. And most of the audience reaction has been fairly positive 
Oh, good. But the expectation is that audiences are usually more positive in that sort of situation where they get to see the preview, especially with the director or writer of the film or whatever. And so it's still it out, I here. imagine, right? Right. It's, it's probably fans of Unbreakable and or Split. And they're all tagging him in their tweets saying how great it was and stuff. And even then, there's still a little bit of like, oh, it's all right. But yeah, overall, it's, it's probably going to be ostracized by critics and fan wank will enjoy it a lot more. Is, so is he still on the rise, plateaued on the way back down? I think he's on the rise so far. I think this will be the make or break. Okay. Oh, that's that's big. You, would, I feel like he should be, get a pass on this because this is obviously more of a, uh, a passion project, personal project. I feel like no matter how this one goes, you should get a pass, and then his next one can be all right. Is he back or not? Or maybe he just earns a, a reputation as an inconsistent filmmaker. Um, I mean, certainly Scorsese and uh, even Spielberg. So every once in a while, they have really good ones again, right? Everybody loved Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Do you guys like Shyamalan? Do you do you like these movies or not like these, or are you neutral about them? So are we talking Split and uh, Unbreakable, or all of Shyamalan's? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to jump like. Yeah, whatever. You act like we have rules here. Yeah. I don't want to break a format. I don't know. There, there is no format. Oh, good. So yeah. you can do whatever you want. Oh. Um, so do you guys like him, not like him, bias, neutral? I like some of it. Like I didn't, I didn't like watching Unbreakable again. I didn't really think it was that good of a movie. And I know you said you hated it. So, but then I watched Split and I remembered how fucking good of a movie Split is. Yeah. Like whatever, whoever the dude is that played everyone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was amazing. He's amazing. So good. But that. But that's the thing is I think, and and I'm I'm going to admit right off the bat I'm the opposite. I I really loved Unbreakable, but I had seen it in the theater and have a love for it because it, this is before superhero movies were getting popular, and it was kind of a trick on you. You didn't know that it was a superhero movie until actually you saw it. Um, I, I can definitely look at it now and say, okay, a lot of that was probably rose colored glasses, which that means that somebody was dead in the scene, and uh, I don't necessarily like a lot of M. Knight's shtick because I think he got a little too full of himself after Sixth Sense and just kept doing the same thing over and over again. Split, I think McAvoy runs that movie really well. I like uh, Anna Scout Joy. Uh, I think she was really good in it. But a oh. lot of it, I think, was just a lot of crap. And I think it was made better by a great performance by a great actor. But it really was the, I'm going to tell you all this thing, and at the last second, I'm going to tack on this other thing to make it seem a lot cooler, because it's it's attached to this other movie that I was I got a lot of praise for, and hopefully you all still like that shit. So, <laughs> I have a problem. I have a few problems with the film. Well, it's a, um, there's a lot of bunk psychology in it. Yeah, and... Uh, and got... a lot of bunk comic books in Unbreakable. All, yeah. None of the... None of the comic book stuff in Unbreakable is authentic in any way. At all. So At all. So he's like both very self-important mm -hmm. and completely off-base and inauthentic at the same time. It's a, it must have been a humbling experience. I kind of get really pissed off about people like uh, M. Night and uh, Quentin Tarantino and a lot of these Hollywood people who seem to think that they're comic book fans or know how to speak about comic books and have no fucking clue. I mean, you can say what you want about Kevin Smith as a director, as a writer, or whatever. The guy fucking loves comics and has made comics and understands comics. All these other assholes come out there and they're just like, oh, yeah, I get the genre and I can speak to it and everything. Fuck you, you can. You don't know shit. Yeah, well, Kevin Smith trotted out like Mike Allred and like, all kinds of other guys for the convention scene and chasing Amy. And it, it made it so authentic and so credible. And, um, you know, and it was still funny. And here he's so confused about what he's making and what it is and everything they say. And it opens up with Wikipedia facts on comics. Oh, yeah. And, that it, was weird. and its biggest sin is that it talks about comics as if it's a genre and not a medium. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, so I, I, uh, I mostly agree with Corey about, um, unbreakable and I'm soft on split too, but I think for different reasons, uh, in general, 
Uh, did you guys hear the story that John Krasinski told uh, last week uh, where he was at the Globes or, or I don't know where he was, but uh, apparently he's good friends with um, Paul uh, Thomas Anderson uh, through Maya Rudolph, I guess, or maybe his wife is. I'm not <laughs> sure. But anyway, they go to dinner parties and stuff and they were talking about a movie. and He's like, oh, I hated that movie. And then like a little few minutes later or something, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson took him aside and goes, hey, man, I just want to let you know you should really never say you hate a movie. Uh, as like a professional courtesy now that you're a director uh you know just uh you could have your opinions but you really shouldn't talk shit about movies and uh he says that was uh really opened his eyes and uh, he re- you know it's like he's he gets it because they've they've gotten bad reviews for their vision imagine putting all your hard work into something and yeah you're gonna read the reviews and you're gonna know it's gonna suck but if you know somebody who knows somebody it's, it's a little more awkward and especially if it's your occupation and it's hypocritical we uh um, we oh, do that I mean, when we play shows Sorry, yeah. but it's well, it's the same thing because a lot of you times don't tell the, you don't tell the opening act how terrible. No, is. and I also don't really tell someone I don't know very well my thoughts on the bands that we're playing with because but, I you know no one want, we don't want to beat those guys where it's like yeah they're really good but they're dicks and yeah you and know I and I personally try not to talk about or or even listen to but um, they go that goes hand in hand uh, like other Simpsons podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, I don't even, I'd like to think mine is better than at least most of them. Um, but even if, you know, even but it's, if it was, it's all I wouldn't subjective. want to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, I've been trying to live with that philosophy more, even though we, I, I do a show that trashes a show and I'm on your show that, that trashes movies. I get it, but everything's with a grain of salt. Yeah. Nothing, none of this fucking matters at the end of the day. So I mostly agree with you guys about M night Shyamalan, but I'm, I was thinking while you guys were talking about him imagine this guy he's probably what 27 28 not even when six Sense just explodes he'd been a screenwriter for a few years before six Sense. he did like she's all that and stuff um you know i don't know how he got where he got because he's very lucky even to get something like that but anyway six Sense made him you know we're talking about his everybody knows m night Shyamalan. that's a yep. you know there's there's 50 directors maybe that you, you'd know like a name like that that he's he's one of the top of all time and it's from the first movie and it's from he's not even 30 years old yet so imagine, I think I think you're right. I think it's his ego. I think he uh, got a little too full of himself and people weren't checking him and that's why the next few movies weren't so good. Um, but maybe it's also part of this or all of this where he's just like this crippling, oh my God, I got to do another twist ending. If I don't do another twist ending, everybody's going to hate me. You know, you got all these studios. You got, you, it must be the most stressful thing in the world to do, to be hit, like 30 years old, coming off Sixth Sense and doing a second film. Now he's been around... He's proven he can still make money, and he's had enough uh, uh, disappointing movies where now he's probably much more relaxed as an artist. He knows none of this fucking matters. But I bet you for Unbreakable, which was the second one after Sixth Sense, that must have been the scariest shooting experience of his life. And it didn't do particularly well. It, it got increased uh, interest later on, but it, it didn't make what Sixth Sense made, or I think even close. It was not right. considered the success. But I still think that there was a heart to it, Mm -hmm. and it it felt like it was both true to his voice. It's one of those things, like, you see an M. Night movie, you know it's an M. Night movie, unless it's Last Airbender or something. Uh, (laughs) But Well, even in that one, he uses all the same motifs. It's all elemental stuff and water stuff. He also doesn't know anything about the characters or the subject that he's he's writing on. The last last time that breaks my heart, I saw the movie uh, well before I knew anything about the show. Um, And uh, I thought that literally he airbended by he was a a kung fu movie from based on the trailer. And that like when he kicked, he could kick so hard that it would like throw a wave. Of like shock, like a shockwave. That's okay. what I thought. That's what I thought I was walking into. Uh, I forget how, but eventually I watched the series years after I see the movie, and I think it's one of the greatest uh, modern. I think it's like I should be up there with Star Wars in terms of like expanded universe and fantasy and stuff like that. Um, I think it's brilliant, and I and I think the sequel series is even more brilliant. Uh, so that really blows my mind that the movie is as bad in retrospect. Like I saw the movie, it's like oh, a bad movie. Now it's like how do you whiff that? And it was fairly faithful to the show, too. So I don't know. I don't, maybe he's just not a good director. I don't think, well, especially I just with remember actor. people coming out of the movie and saying you did, you couldn't even say the main character's name right. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> of all things, how do you not have them say the, the character's name correctly? Oh, really? It's not like there was an, a ton of source material. But yeah, so what I was going to say is that M. Night's 
style, it, stylistically, you can look at a movie and know that he's the one who did it. You can look at a uh, Tarantino film. You can look at a Tim Burton movie. The, so nothing to take away from what his accomplishments are, but I think he fell in the same thing that Lucas did, which is that at some point he didn't have people that he could actually trust and listen to, to say, Hey, you know, take this in another direction or he just stopped asking for directives or whatever. I don't know, but I, I got to a point where I just was tired of his shtick and, and it's okay if that's, if it's your one note jam and that's all you ever do and, and you get continued success with it, that's great. But I think at some point, people want to stop hearing the same Bon Jovi album and over and over again, and they want to get a new sound. And he doesn't, <laughs> he didn't come up with a new sound until he <clears throat> basically started having failures in films and people got tired of that. And I, I appreciate that he worked his way back to getting into the, the zeitgeist of people's views and stuff. And like when split happened, but all I remember is everybody coming out of Split and saying, oh, my God, that ending. Oh, my God, that ending. Not talking about the ending of the story, but the tacked on bit of the connection to the other thing. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty bad way to rate a movie. Now, and do you think people were generally, besides film buffs and guys like us, do you think, and, and women like us, do you think that people <laughs> were genuinely like, shh. Like the uh, the general audiences, because Split was a pretty mainstream hit, gave a shit or even knew what was happening when uh, uh, Bruce Willis with the name Dunn. So they have to remember David Dunn from Unbreakable that most people didn't see when it was out and it was 18 years ago. So most people were like, what? Uh, if I was the age I was saw Unbreakable now, I wouldn't know what Unbreakable was. And like, do you think people like what? Mr. Glass, David Dunn's back. Stop the presses. <laughs> I, right. I think a few people Luke were Skywalker's Darth Vader's son, David Dunn and Mr. Glasser <laughs> in Split. What? Uh, all of the all of the news coverage was very matter of fact. It wasn't like you may not remember this twenty year old movie. It was it was like it was the reveal was that they were uh, you know it was teased after Unbreakable that there was a universe of movies coming. Well, not it wasn't a universe because there, there was no such thing as or a whatever, or whatever. But it was supposed to be a trilogy. It was right. yeah, and like I like, I really well, like, yeah. The greatest of all film achievements. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked Unbreakable uh, when I saw it in the theater and you know, I was I was 15, 16. I was just thinking I didn't realize it was that far back. I remember seeing it with Dan. So that means that's one of the movies where either my mother or his mother dropped us off. And I think it was PG-13. But if it was R, they would have to get in line. And she, like Dan's mother would go, I'd like to buy rated R tickets for my son and his friends. And like we're doing this in front of kids who are slightly like one or year, two years older than us that don't have to go through that. It was, it was humiliating. And the, Unbreakable was one of those films. Uh, and I liked it when it came out. And I was excited because I was like, OK, that was kind of boring. But season two, I mean, uh, the second movie and the third movie are going to be amazing. You know, I, I I don't like origin stories for the most part. I I, I they might be the most uh, satisfying of of movie arcs, but uh, I know what's coming. Like uh, Heroes, the NBC show, I I never liked it, and I just like season one was so boring, and I was just like, all right, once we get to season two and everybody has their full powers, not knowing that would never happen because of uh, you know creative issues and the fact that you can't have everybody have their powers because of budgets and. But I always think the the beginning, the origin star is the most boring. I can't wait for the sequels. I can't wait for Avengers two, or three, Spider Man two. Um, well, it's a promise. It's a promise that's never fulfilled. Exactly. So I was very excited to get this trilogy. Eventually, I was like, okay, they're never happening. And then I, to, I don't know. I was almost disappointed that this is how the sequel is coming. But at the same time, I'm super pumped. We're getting a Mister Glass movie. I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. I'm just curious to see it. Mister Glass. So his character is probably the thing that I like the least in Unbreakable. Mm. Someone else was playing that character and bringing them to life in a less schmaltzy way with less like on the nose production color design choices. Um, it was very dumbed down. Yeah, It's really weird. The one thing that I, there's two things I like that he does. Okay. So all the comic book stuff sucks except for the handwritten note. Um, or, on the uh, yeah, the one in the car. The, Which is the only thing I've missed, by the way. That was the one time only, I went to It's night. the only like comic book thing that has any kind of authenticity. The the lettering font on how he does some of those letters is is like a classic comics font. 
But so this, like Corey said, this was happening right at the very start of the, the modern comic book movement. It was after Blade and probably X-Men, and that's about it. Yeah. And do you think you have to dumb down uh, the color schemes and everything because movie audiences aren't acquainted with the comic book style? Or is that or if no, I think that M. Night had done that with the color red in The Sixth Sense. And so yeah. every time he would do a shot, like when Dunn is in the the whole like space where he's touching people you see the color of that person's jacket is very expressive. So you see a red jacket and then their red is the only thing that you see in the next scene of them exposing what their dark secrets are. You see a yellow one, you see this one. And so the purple with glass is obviously the very stark contrast, but it shows that he's been a villain the whole time because he's always been in that kind of color scheme. And it's those extreme color schemes that kind of show that these are the bad people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, but I think that's an artistic choice. My problem that I look back at this last night as I'm rewatching it for the first time in years is, holy shit, is Elijah the shitty ass comic book fan that you're not a good enough fan in his eyes? You do not deserve to say you're a comic fan. Is he the fake comic girl guy? Because when that guy's trying to buy a piece of art for his kid and he's like, no, get the fuck out of here. How many fucking times do you and your gallery have a chance to sell a priceless piece of, of comic history to somebody and then give yourself the moment and say, no, fuck you. You don't buy this for your four year old. What's this four year old going to do? Make a paper airplane out of it. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> Take the sale. You're going to break something. You need insurance. Yeah. I got to imagine that you're not easy to cover. Fucking take it. And right. I just was like, fuck, this guy does not give a shit about comic books at all. My favorite parts yeah. of podcast of terror is when Corey goes on a capitalist rant. It, it happens all you lot. earn that dollar you earn that buck uh no yeah it, it, he would totally be the face of like gamergate now so <laughs> i'm curious based on what i've seen in the uh the glass trailers i was something i so i don't think i've ever this was the first time i've watched this movie in full since maybe college i, I think i saw it once after the theater um but maybe since the theater uh and there was a lot of things i forgot about and i didn't remember uh mr glass's uh, way of talking like it's almost aut- uh, autistic like the uh the very uh, uh, over eloquent and and he uh, works his way around and it, does the child need a tissue or something like that you know it, like not even talking to the child as if it's there um, and I didn't get that sense in the very few things I've seen in the glass trailer in the glass trailer I feel like it was just Samuel L. Jackson being Samuel like he goes looks like the bad guys are teaming up like I don't see Mr. Glass in this movie saying something like that he would be. He would say something like, "It appears that there will be a, a union, an alliance." The of The character superhero. is so jazzed that there's other superhero morons to hang out with for a movie. That he's a <laughs> man. <laughs> also, like, wasn't the whole point of Unbreakable was like, "Wow, oh, we have a superhero now," and like, yeah. you so tell like, me how it I didn't see the last twenty minutes of what Unbreakable. <laughs> Unbreakable. Oh, come on! That's the best part. I. This is what I think happens based on the one. Wait, wait, so where where did you leave off before you tell us what you think? Uh, He's like, it's like he's wearing his fucking awesome looking hood cape. Yeah, his poncho. He's wearing his great poncho. It looks it looks like a great superhero costume. It's a rainproof. It's a rain rain jacket. It's literally his armor against rain against water. His weakness. I think he gets in a he gets in a a pool like the tarp of a pool, and he's got he's gonna drown. You turn it off there in the most exciting scene in the movie. No, no, before that, this is just what I remember. I, knew <laughs> I hate this movie so much. I, I really... That's like watching. That's like watching Avengers, and then Thanos snaps, and you're like, I've seen what I need to do. <laughs> All right. Hey, if it makes I'm you sure feel any better, I didn't even get to Thanos snapping in the Avengers. Um. So, so you stopped at the end, uh, Ben. You didn't miss much. Basically, uh, the kids save him, and pull him out of the water because that's his weakness. He's because drowning. They're... Because they're all heroes together, he makes he lifts up their reaching hands. Mm-hmm. I, I just I just want to give Matt I just want to give Matt a moment to say uh, what you missed. I'm going to spoil it for you. Is Thanos snaps and then it turns into a whole thing of uh, you can't hurry love the Phil Collins cover. Thanos just <laughs> I love that with song. like four other Thanos is singing around him and stuff. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that would be kind of amazing. Um, it'll probably be better than the end game. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I, yeah, so he, he, the kids save him with a pool skimmer. He kills the guy. He literally chokes the bad guy to death. The parents are both dead. 
He saved the two kids. And then the next day is the first day he wakes up and he's not sad anymore. And he shows his son the newspaper headline that says masked uh, hooded hero saves children. Nobody knows who he is. And, and uh, he's just like, he's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you remember you watched. Don't forget that he also heals his marriage from it. it, it it's that moment of he picks, he picks up his sleeping life. wife and drags her up to his bedroom. <laughs> Which is a weird cut from him, like lifting up the dead body of the dead uh, mom. It's very weird, but well, their dynamic is really there's a lot of there's some there's some rich stuff in there. I think. We'll get there. We'll get there. But he, but it's a happy ending, and you think it's the start of a superhero, and it was. It was supposed to be the first of a trilogy. So I was depressed. A at the end of Split, it looks like he's uh, unless he's you know still that's his secret identity. But clearly in Glass, uh, he's he's been in a mental hospital for a while, so that's no fun. I don't know if he's been in a mental hospital for a while from what I'm gathering from the previews. It, it seems that they all wind up there, but obviously, uh, so Ben, you don't even know what the glass is the villain from they the first movie. Mr. Glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, he, basically he realizes, uh, he, he did the, uh, he did all the bombings looking for somebody who would survive. He blew yeah, up the, plane, yeah. he the train. He started yeah. fire. Those, those miraculous words in perfect. It's there's definitely an autism element to it. I think that he plays it too dapper. Like, like he should really just be a guy in the street with long boxes. Well, let yeah, me you're right. He's got the suits and the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> let, let's take a step back. Remember 1999 when this movie came out, what were the popular things of superheroes? Was Batman begins out yet? Because no, it's no, very no. much, that's another superhero origin story. Uh, and and the villain is very like ah yeah yeah. But um, we had Michael Rosenbaum playing Lex Luthor on Smallville, and Michael Rosenbaum would just walk into a room and start quoting Nietzsche or Sun Tzu or some bullshit to get himself in the conversation. He just comes in, philosophizes for a second, and then like goes back out to be. I mean, is he a bad guy? Is he not a bad guy? I mean, I know he's Lex Luthor, but is he a bad guy? And it was a lot of stuff like that. It was the villain had to be smarter than the hero, had to prophesy to the hero a lot. And were they a bad guy? Were they not a bad guy? And it made them kind of this like line walking thing. And so Glass, we don't realize is the bad guy until it's revealed what he's done, but he still sees himself as noble as to making it happen. He does acknowledge that he's the arch villain to, to David Dunn. But he does it in such a way like this was his mission in life is to find this hero, to bring this hero to fruition for the world. And so he went through villainous ways to do it. But, but he sees himself far, being well, a part of the reason why there is a hero in the first place. Ah, uh, so do, but do you do you think he doesn't see himself as a supervillain? I no, see. He I, does. OK, OK. My favorite part is his car. Is his <laughs> car? In case gets, guys, it looks so comfortable. <laughs> it looks very comfortable. I mean, he must have made a lot of money selling comics. Yeah, and that's another thing. He's hanging out in that comic store later on. Yeah. And he, he he's like, he's just sitting there and he doesn't fucking realize, oh, a superhero has a weakness until he sees the cover of a comic and remembers. It. But then you look in the back of his his uh his uh, art gallery later, and you see just walls and walls of fucking comics. Like you have something in there where the hero has a weakness in one of those fucking issues. You had to go and go comatose in the back of a comic store and piss off some guy. I felt that because I, you know, I've managed about three different comic stores in my life. <laughs> he, uh, he lit. Did we lose Corey? Uh, he freezes uh, once in a while. He uh, he literally uses the word kryptonite at one point. Um, he goes, yeah, that's weird. And also they rip off the action comics font. Well, that's fine. I, I, that, I don't mind. I, I, I get what they're doing. They can't use action comics, but they're trying. They're, 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 they should have gotten a license. If they're going to say kryptonite, they might as well be like... Well, who released it? Disney released this. this. This is a Disney movie, and uh, they certainly uh, aren't going to get uh, uh, Warner Brothers... IP, but um, he, well, they, they, the, but the fact that he knows what kryptonite is means like the weakness is a, it's not like an obscure super uh, comic book thing. He should have already been thinking on all the times he was looking for a hero that the hero would have a weakness. That's because Shyamalan doesn't know anything about comics. Like that's all he doesn't know anything. You read about Wikipedia. You didn't see the the, the openings. <laughs> there are you know, so you know, many you know, Google search results. But no, you're right. He shortcutted the dialogue. He 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 wants to tell the audience, "Oh, this is the thing that I'm talking about." But he shortcuts it while saying, "I didn't know about this thing." 
So surprisingly, there's an issue of a comic that I remembered. Oh, yeah, they look for the weakness of all the superheroes. I couldn't just say to you, it's kryptonite, the word that I'm about to give you in the following breath. Yeah, no, the writing in this and I think in Split is very bad. Uh, I think I'm not sure I'm struggles as a as a it's it's funny that he's a considered he is a writer director. I think he would be much more successful as a director. I think he's a great director. I just don't think he's a great screenwriter. Um, and he, narrative and structure, he's not bad with, but dialogue is very bad, and he's not great directing actors. Uh, and Split has the same problem with just, you, you know, movies need exposition, but uh, it's, it's very clunky in his films. It's and and like the, I hate the fake way people talk. I really that really bothers me. Unless you're stylistic like Tarantino, and you're and that's the point. But I hate when you're trying to sound. Like you, like more naturalistic, and by doing that, you sound even uh, worse. Like so, uh, the opening of Split is like the the kid, the way the kids talk with the dad, and like it's just everybody sounds like they grew up in like Aaron Sorkin's house, and I, I that I I never buy, especially with teenagers, and especially with like yeah. you know the and uh, that's why I don't even think I don't I don't know I don't know if the autistic thing is on the page or if that was Samuel because I don't think Samuel I think Samuel L. Jackson can be a very hammy actor as well. So I don't know if that was an acting choice or if it was on the page, but it, it probably was on the page where like M. Night Shyamalan, he can't think of a, of an eccentric character that doesn't speak 100 percent eccentrically. There's no gray areas for him when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, the uh, other thing is, is I think screenwriting has taken this this shtick of every movie that we do that's supposed to have some dramatic reveal towards the, the end is we give you a line early on and then we repeat it at the end. You know, why, why, do, why do we fall? So we learn to get back up, Bruce. It's the same bullshit concept I'm, I'm, done over and over again in superhero movies. It's like, here's this thing, this message that we just hinted at earlier, and here's that same message coming back, and now you have that click of realization. And it's like, okay, I fucking get it, but is that all that Hollywood can do with these movies anymore? Is that all every writer does? Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up Nolan because uh... – uh, I was thinking exactly of Christopher Nolan when you're talking about uh, M. Night Shyamalan just doing the same Bon Jovi uh, album over and over because Nolan and Shyamalan are very similar directors. Every one of their movies is basically the same, um, you know, which, uh, it, it, it's different in, in very superficial ways. The, they, they have a formula and they have a pattern that they stick to both. Uh, they're more of, it's mostly visual and emotional. Uh, I think Nolan's a slightly better writer, but also he doesn't write his own scripts. Usually he has co-writers. Yeah. Uh, I think that's important. And, and maybe uh, Nolan's probably a stronger filmmaker. So, but what's funny is he, Nolan has not had a single bomb. He is, he has hit every single time. Uh, Prestige was a hit. Batman begins was a hit. Uh, uh, Inception, even Interstellar was like, you know, it, it didn't do as well as people wanted. And Dunkirk didn't get the Oscars. People thought, but they do all right, and and critically they do all right. Even when people go, ah, it was okay. They never trash it. And you know, Shyamalan had a a, a dud right out of the gate uh, after Sixth Sense with Unbreakable. Uh, Village wasn't very well received, and Lady in the Water was really just tanked. Uh, Signs got mixed. I love Signs. Signs is my favorite uh, Shyamalan film. Um, but he, he, you know, he. By didn't the way, have, uh, he didn't have the momentum. Nolan ever. Imagine Nolan like uh, the first or second Batman movie tanked, and like Nolan had Shyamalan's career. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Joaquin Phoenix was supposed to play uh, McAvoy's character in Split. Really, he was supposed to play Doctor Strange too. I think. Uh, I think I would like that better. I think James McAvoy does a good job, but I think I don't think he does a great job. Uh, I think. Uh, I think he gets it's I don't know I don't know how you can do a bunch of personalities especially like a, an old woman and a kid uh without seeming very hammy there might not be a way right. to do it. I haven't seen um Sally Fields split personality movie but it's in the, the it's inherently kind of actory uh thing to do but there was a couple of his his Barry or actually I guess it's his uh the other guy pretending to be Barry I yeah. thought it was re like he he actually did a really good I don't know like it's to me it sounds like a New York accent I know he's in Philly but uh, the Barry character is my cousin, like was a very specific like type of person that I just immediately was like, oh, he's turned into that character. Whereas when he was the little kid, it was like James McAvoy's playing a little kid. Um, the little kid was rough. The little kid was hard yeah. to to buy into. The, I think the Phyllis character I liked a lot. Yeah, I think Joaquin Phoenix might have may, maybe may have uh, done a better job. And I, again, I think McAvoy did a good job. But I think I may uh, that would have been interesting with Phoenix. And he's just creepier. Well, so here's uh, 
Beatmaster is calling us out in the uh, the chat. The water is the weakness again. So here's one of my things: is do we believe at this point that the reveal, the the final scene of whatever this fucking movie Glass is going to be, is going to be the reveal that uh, Dunn and McAvoy's character got their powers from the aliens from yeah. because oh, the same weakness? Yeah. I absolutely, I believe that for years. I've always believed that David Dunn's powers must come from the aliens that come from science. I like that. I like that a lot. And I wish I didn't know that because if that had happened, I probably would have been like, oh my God. So so Split was spoiled for me too. Nobody told me that Dunn was in it, but like I was already seeing the articles. Like, are you know, could could Unbreakable, uh, there, could there be a sequel between Unbreakable and Split? I didn't know there was a specific uh, reference, but I already already had the two movies in, in my head together because of that. So when it came, I was like, okay, that makes sense. And uh, I would I really I would have loved to have known what my reaction to David Dunn be. I think I would have really been excited if uh, I saw David Dunn and had no idea he was coming. Because again, I am a big Unbreakable. F- I, like I, I I haven't seen it, but I have a, it has a place in my heart. I, I think it's a cute film. No, I think. It, again, going back to the the twenty years ago that it happened, I was very excited when I came out of that of like, holy shit! I can't believe what this movie was because it it subverted my expectations of what I was walking into when I saw it, and I thought there was a lot there that was very promising. But in a world when we didn't have other superhero movies that were doing well, and and certainly we've had the the gamut run of like high end super movies, low end super movies. This wasn't Steel, uh, it wasn't Catwoman. But it, it wasn't Winter Soldier, which is one of my favorites. On the other hand, we've also seen the Marvel thing happen so much that we kind of can tear apart the Marvel movies real easily now and know, you know, did they achieve, did they not achieve, or are they just doing the same thing over and over again? Um, yeah. But I, I I felt at least because, one, it was very new to me. Uh, on It was only Shmaelin's second film, and it was new in the sense that we didn't have a lot of other great superhero films. We'd already gone through, I think, Clooney's Batman. Uh, It was like, okay, this is kind of a breath of fresh air. But the other part of it is that he wrote Unbreakable because he didn't want to do a whole superhero movie. He felt like he was more interested in the origin story than the whole other thing. He he like had taken the superhero journey and decided that the origin story was the most interesting part. Then he did a supervillain origin story in Split. What if he's not capable of doing anything past the origin? Yeah. What if he can't make these two characters or three characters meet up in a way that is actually interesting? Because every time I see the commercials for Glass, it's uh, McAvoy's character jumping through the, the ground like some sort of beast thing, which is inherent to what his character is supposed to be. But it looks really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a beast. The the beast, uh, yeah, and that's the other thing that's confusing. Or the horde. Who's the, who's the supervillain? The horde or the the beast? Horde. Right. Pick one. And um, also, my my psychiatrist doctor doesn't recognize that I could possibly have an a twenty fourth personality. Oh yeah, you've got all these twenty three personalities bumping around and knocking into each other and shit and sending me emails and stuff. But there's no fucking way there's a twenty fourth one. You dumb <laughs> bitch. You deserve to die. <laughs> um. So I want to take a quick moment here. Uh. Uh, in your chat there, Beatmaster uh, says it won't be the aliens that give them the, their powers. It'll be the plant life. Oh. Uh, <laughs> nice little <laughs> nice little reference to that happening, which again, I, I see, I don't hate Shyamalan. The happening is a terrible movie, but like, I, it, oh, I but when I watch that. it, there's like, there's things I like about it. And, and even the things I don't like, I like that I don't like about it. Like Mark Wahlberg's terrible in the movie, but I kind of like it. Like I like how terrible he is and I like the way he's terrible. <laughs> um, I can't watch it. I, I can't watch any of the like I after the village, yeah. I was just like I'm not watching anymore. And and Wahlberg is definitely not ever going to be something that draws me towards a film. I was very disappointed in the village um, oh. because, because I I guessed the twist ending halfway through, and then like the same thing is with Prestige. I've never seen Prestige since the theater, and everybody tells me I got to rewatch it, and I'm gonna rewatch it. Uh, but I hated it because right away I realized that what the twist was going to be, and then right. And that you know, and, and the, the point of the movie isn't the twist, and that that's a problem. That's why you always end up like in yeah, like, yeah, but why twist, man. <laughs> <laughs> For prestige. Um, also, Matt, I sent you those photos. I sent you oh, three I, photos. I saw from, them. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you wanted to share them with your the screen there, but uh, it's it's me and Ben. It's up to uh, you if you want me to. Well, that's why I sent them to you rather than. Uh, 
That's why I, I screenshotted them and cut out all the other stuff. But it's wow. uh, it's me and Ben 16 years ago this month because that was when I got my, my first ever digital camera. Um, and uh, yeah, and it, the one is of our door. And like the jokes are hilarious because we we put we thought this was the funniest thing. We, we said we put the ween in Halloween. The joke was supposed to be that ween doesn't mean anything. It wasn't a reference to the band. Uh, yep. And we just oh, thought that, about that, that kind of nonsense humor was so fucking funny. See, that's not really Guido me though, because already no, my hair is out and I bleach blonde my thing, and I got the the I switched from a silver chain to a rope, like a three dollar <laughs> rope. I do that really like favorite. Ben's Raiders sweatshirt though. It does look like you pushed the little daisies and made them come up though. <laughs> yeah, that's I get it. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then the door. <laughs> What's going on? And like so, like yeah, pictures and then of you on the internet. And then we have the St. Patrick's that we did a St. Patrick's Day thing. Uh, and, um, you know, we thought it'd be like, what's, you know, we thought a dinosaur would be funny because that, that's not Irish. Uh, but I, I do love, uh, I do love Ben's drawings. Ben, Ben has a great, uh, aesthetic. And then we put, so for Halloween, we put Super Mario, Robocop, and Raphael. And we we're like, who are three non Halloween characters? But that's such an inherently stupid idea because it's Halloween. Everybody's a Halloween character because you dress up as them for Halloween. So none of our jokes were funny or made. We were the M. Night Shyamalan of dorm door jokes. Of life, glory. (laughs) Of life. We're the M. Night Shyamalans of life. (laughs) The twist ending is uh, this is it. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Um, so here's my notes for the movies because uh, I, I like I like how you guys dance around, but it's very hard for me to. Uh, no, I, I thought about taking notes, and I'm like, no, Jack is going to do that. <laughs> so I want to talk about the beginning, the comic book facts being listed in Unbreakable. Oh. I thought that was very unnecessary. You don't need that. You don't need that. I don't know why he would choose to do that. And then at the end of the movie, they do um, like freeze frames. It's like Mr. Glass was sentenced to 18 years, like the end of the People's Court. It's like David Dunn. <laughs> David Dunn was awarded seven thousand dollars in damages. He will have to pay the lawyer's fees. You know, stuff like that. And I don't know if that was I, if that that was Shyamalan. What the fuck are you doing? First of all, you only see that in movies when it's a true story. You know, yeah. like uh, like Goodfellas. You find out that uh, Henry Hill was sentenced to seventeen years is now in witness protection. You don't do that. David Dunn movies. is now known as Senator Blukowski or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like you don't have to do the do that. You know, unless it's a comedy, but. Um, I was thinking maybe the the studio, the studio made maybe made him do that because they, they were like it's not clear that Mr. Glasses gets away with it or something like that because uh, Dunn basically just walks away and it's like is he gonna get him arrested is he gonna call him out is he gonna just let it go you know so maybe the studio made him do that to dumb it down uh, so that's my first note my second note is Bruce Willis two thousand he's this is one of his first bald people where he shaved his head and he's now like you know grizzled uh, sad bruce willis which started with six cents but i didn't realize that he was still so young looking in the beginning of that that new phase like he really looks young there it's crazy well this kid's not that old no i know and it, like he's it's scary to think that i'm older than probably the first three john mcclain's at this point or at least around uh, at least the first couple um uh, i we already mentioned the clunky oh here this a little House of Cards trivia. There's four actors from House of Cards in this movie. You have, um, you have uh, Robin, Wright. Day, Robin Wright, Robin uh, Wright, the Doctor at the very beginning, which is one of my favorite scenes where he's like f- trying to figure out how Bruce Willis doesn't have a scratch on him. That's Michael Kelly, who uh, is the second lead in in House of Cards, third after uh, Kevin Spacey, uh, and he is also he's a great character actor. He's, a, he's uh, I know a lot of actors who know him. He's uh, you know he's just been working his ass off for, for a couple of decades now. Uh, but you, uh, I fell in love with him in the Dawn of the Dead remake. He's like the hick uh, mall guard that is like right. a total asshole, but then like uh, turns out to be one of the best characters in the movie. Um, so he's great. Uh, then you have uh, the oh the guy in the fatigue jacket that gets out of line when they start padding for guns. He is. Um, He's the hacker in House of Cards. He's like uh, he like hacks the election basically. Ooh, hacker. Uh, and he starred on the comeback with uh, Lisa Kudrow, and I saw him very in a very bad mood with his wife and daughter on the uh, the uh, R train about a year ago, which I'll never forget. Um, and then uh, there was a fourth one. Oh, this this the killer at the end. He was uh, one of the bodyguards. He was one of the Secret Service agents. So a little weird for for House of Cards uh, superfecta there. Oh, I had a question for you, Matt. 
So I remember one of the scenes I remember is when he's bench pressing and they keep adding the paint cans and he just keeps going. Yeah. And you're making such a big deal out of like, holy shit, he can just keep doing it. And then at the end, when he's li- lifting all of the weights and all of the paint cans, he's like, how much is that? And he goes, uh, 350. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. 350 is a lot, but it's not, that's not superhuman, right? There's people that can do 350. Yeah. Um, I, I, the most I've ever benched is 335. So you came almost as close as a superhero. Yes. Um, but our friend, like friend of the show, previous guest, Matt Vincent, has benched damn near 500. And so why is it such a big deal that it's 350? I think it's just because he's a small guy and he's... Yeah, like, because he's not a professional bodybuilder. No. He's not someone who's doing a lot of lifting normally. And he was surprised that he did 250. So to go from 250 to adding another 100 pounds and still being able to do it and not really feeling... It seems like the resistance that he felt was the same at the 250 was the 350. Yeah, yeah. That, that it was probably all mental. Yeah. Well, realistic. He, yeah, in a grounded he was film, never living up to his own potential. Yeah. I, I would like that works in a grounded film, but I just feel like it has to be more cinematic than that. Yeah, and it, does, it didn't seem to make a ton of sense, like, um, kind well, of like you said. It, much. What was maybe that? it's not supposed to be that, that much. Like, you are, so you are supposed to remain a little skeptical about okay, yeah, that's yeah. Good well, and what's within the realm of reality. But and they like, do make it such a heroic what? moment. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's because he's like a schmaltzy, overselling, you know. Yeah. yeah, a guy who has has spent his years trying to pretend that he was subject to a bad injury, yeah. so that he doesn't have the physicality that he had when he was in college. So it, it it's both a surprise to him because it's like the while I don't believe it, the thing about him when's the last time you called in sick to work or whatever, and him having to go through all this rigmarole to figure out if he's ever been sick. It's like. Fucking dude, I know if I've been sick or not. Yeah. yeah, and I know, and I at least know my sick days because every time I take a sick day, it's like, you know, it's money out of my goddamn check. Yeah, and he's only lived in that house for like three years. So you'd know if you took a sick day in that three years' time. Yeah, yeah. Weird, weird, weird choices. Um, I do hear, speaking of weird choices, how about like the fact that, so they worked very hard on the score. They wanted to come up with a very memorable score. I don't think they did. I think the split score is better. Um, but what there I love were probably is, points of the split score where I thought it was this score used again, though. Uh, they might, it may have been. It was a, This was much more strings, and I remember a split was a lot of piano. But um, it was very subdued, which is what made it really funny at the very beginning of the film. And then when he becomes the superhero and he's in the station and he's, like, touching everybody, they play this, like, funky 90s beat. That was, you know, only popular. Like, like I, I've rewatched the Rocky fight scenes uh, recently, and I forgot that the <laughs> fight scene in Rocky Five has this like '90s hip hop beat to it the whole time, which is <laughs> ridiculous. It's like, wow, <laughs> 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 like, and like <laughs> you know, and it was like that MTV style, like crooked zoom ins, and um, and anyway, so I was very surprised. I mean, it fits 1999, 2000. It fits the, the time period, but this serious, grounded, unbreakable, you know, this sad, somber, rainy superhero film starring grizzled Bruce Willis. And the soundtrack's like, <laughs> and, and then I realized at the end of Split, it comes back too uh, when they when they introduce uh, Bruce Willis again that, 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 you know, a split just has this haunting ending. She's going back to her rapist uncle or whatever. And uh, the splits, the split soundtrack fades away, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> unbreakable, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the unbreakable rap. Yeah, exactly. uh, that would be the opening down keep unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt or whatever. Yeah. My uh, name is Glass, and I'm here to say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that fucking comic down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, first of all, never watch the movie Lady Hawk. Uh, if, if you grew up with it in the 80s, we were very forgiving of that soundtrack uh, behind the scenes of this otherwise beautiful fantasy film with Rucker Hauer and Michelle Pfeiffer. But uh, it's really tough to watch and listen to that music in the background now. <laughs> uh, we we had a different period where we accepted a lot of shit like that, and the 90s and I were think terrible. Yeah, it's it's funny. I I look at pictures of me in high school. I'm like, what was I fucking thinking? But it, yeah. in that moment, it seems okay, and it's hard to create something that's timeless. And yeah. I, and I worry about that. It's it's like watching Labyrinth for the first time in the 2000s if you didn't see it in the 80s, and you're like. Why are so many people so into this movie? It's an okay movie, 
but it doesn't work unless you grew up with it. And I, yeah, I think yeah. that there are things that you just kind of look at and you can tear apart. Like who made this decision? What is, who thought this was okay? It's like, well, li- every fucking matrix movie ends with rage against the machine. Every transformers movie ends with Lincoln park. <laughs> it, it just, for some reason, the signatures get a little bit overloaded on these things. Yeah, I don't know who's yeah. been the contract. I, I always wonder if like what in 20 years, like if I try to shoot a film and make it look like a seventies film, uh, I can do that. You know, um, the Starsky and Hutch comedy did that. Or if you want to try to make something look like the 90s, uh, 90s style or something look like a 50s or, or the artist looked like it was made in the 1930s. And I always wonder, like, what will the spoof if you're playing up the artistic tendencies of the 2000s? What would it be? And I think maybe, although uh, pop culture has slowed down since the 90s because of the Internet and stuff. Uh, so now uh, 10 years of fashion last 15 or 20 but uh, I think the movies of like the last 19 years or so are like unbreakable where they're over self serious, you know, and the bomb and the, and Oh the, yeah. And like, and right now we just kind of like, yeah, all these movies are self serious, but I wouldn't be surprised if like that becomes a hallmark of this decade or so of, of uh, types of movies and music and stuff. You know, even our music is all very minor key and dr- like sad pop. Uh, and I would be very curious. It would be funny if in like 2040 people are like, Oh, we're going to do a retro vintage 2010 superhero movie where everybody's sad. It's always raining. Yeah. I can see them doing that. I love that story. (laughs) Which which story? (laughs) Um, Oh, this shitty slow motion in the movie surprised me too. You ever see like the really choppy slow motion? Where they like it, everything gets blurry when it gets slow. And um, small mysteries. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, Lethal Weapon did it a lot. That's because they didn't film it in slow motion. They did it in post, and there's not enough frames to really keep the image clear because you're stretching each frame out. And that means they didn't script it to be slow motion. They came up with it in editing. And I just you'd think M Night Shyamalan, who storyboards everything, and he's got the whole movie in his head. You would I don't know why they chose to do slow motion scenes uh, in post, and they, I don't know that that's a I guess film school jack uh, that drives me nuts when I see that. But that's a fair call out. I mean, it's not something that I would pick up on because I don't have the education of the filmmaking that you do. But you're right; it it is one of those things that just to watch it and see that it does take you out a little bit. And the it fact took that me it a long time like to yeah. Been, yeah yeah that it. It, it was a missed thing as opposed to uh, like just a mistake. Yeah. I, I, it's not something I, they teach you in film school. I don't think I, I it's just, I noticed it enough times and then I finally put two and two together because I knew how slow motion works, but I, you, you could always, like, I remember, you know, I grew up with the lethal weapon movies and I was always like, why is this slow motion scene? So choppy. You know, it's almost an, it was almost an aesthetic of the lethal weapon series because Donna used it so much. Um, well, by the way, I made Ben in college when we lived together sit down and watch all four Lethal Weapon movies. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At what point between three and four did he stab you? <laughs> he, he cried during three, I think. I think he cried at the, the boat scene. I haven't seen any of them since. So <laughs> I, I made my, 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 my make an impression on me. Here, here's, something, many years. here's something that's funny. Uh, it's a, a note I have. Uh, when he's t- in the train station and he's feeling for all the crimes, and he finally, you know, sees a guy a murderer, and he goes after him. But I like that before that, he sees a guy that's raping women and a, a, and a racist yeah. person yeah. who's like smashing glass, and he's like, "I'll let them go this time." Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's not violent enough for me. I, I can definitely see, and I almost want to say like he was turning towards the the rapist guy, yeah, like yeah, he yeah. was going towards him, and then the other guy like got between oh, him yeah. and him. I could accept that. But yeah, I thought about that too. It's like, okay, yeah, you lifted a jewel out of the case, lady. That's one thing. Uh, and then it got progressively worse. But that that was a moment of like, that motherfucker needs to get hit or or knocked around a <laughs> yeah, little bit least, in yeah, front of the train. Break his break his is like crush crush his genitals with your super strength. <laughs> but but we don't want to ruin his whole life. I mean, he's got a sports career ahead of him. We don't want him to <laughs> suffer because of mistake. Is a uh, uh, pop fuck. pop one testicle. With your super, I'm glad super that judge fitness. got called out. <laughs> Fuck that judge. <laughs> um, the uh, you think a security guard? He's a security guard for a living. I feel like he had the total element of, of surprise on the killer at the end, and he puts him in this like really like tough chokehold with a guy that all, guy almost breaks out of. It's got to be an easier way to knock somebody out, right? Like or just bop him on the head. head. I, I don't yeah. know. Back of the head. Yeah, he's new. He's new to this stuff. No, uh, fucking. <laughs> He's new he's to the stuff. He calls, he's a security he calls guard. Elijah. 
he calls Elijah to get advice. He's like, well, what do we do now? He's like, well, now you got to go test this shit out. It's like, hey, we just discussed how your weakness is water. Go out on a fucking rainy night, dumb shit. Shit, it's, I could see Dunn making that mistake himself because he's not bright. But then Elijah to lead him toward it too. Like maybe today's not your day. <laughs> Bring an umbrella. Fucking the hell. penguin has it. The penguin uses umbrellas. And how would you feel if you were the kids who were just rescued by this guy, and then you have to walk down and say he fell into a fucking covered pool and can't swim his way out? You know what? I think we're okay with the murderer. I think the guy who killed my parents. <laughs> was probably that's, the better choice that's scary i don't know if you fall in a tarp you know i well, oh, no, I mean, I, it's terrifying yeah i can't swim either and uh oh god that, yeah that that scene really gets to me drown drowning freaks me the fuck out but you know you got to be telling the the newspaper people the next day so someone just came in and randomly <laughs> saved you well yeah but i wouldn't say he was good at it you know he just don't kinda... thank me thank the pool skimmer I don't know if he was just a cable guy who came in because he didn't seem to know what the fuck he was doing at all. <laughs> and then, so here's another thing that I'm kind of questioning. You're supposedly invulnerable and super strong. No body weight? Because when the murderer is, he's trying to choke the guy out. He's just getting thrown around the fucking room. Just yeah, slamming yeah. into the walls and shit. Like he has, like he has fucking long shots bones from the X-Men <laughs> who had bird bones. So they were hollow. <laughs> like he's just like getting tossed left and right and keeping hold. Sure, that's great. But like you have the ability to use more than just your arm strength at that point. You can pull back, you can do anything else. And it's like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tuck it in and see what happens. Like, what if that guy had then just jumped out the window and taken you back to the pool again? <laughs> that, that's what she should have done. Like, you know, like Bowser, you have to throw him into three different bombs. Um, but yeah, that's exactly. He's a security guard. He should know how to subdue somebody. That, that, right. That, but I mean, that's a plot hole in a movie full of plot holes. I'm just that. Those are my notes. Those are all the notes I had from Breakable. I don't know if you guys had any as well. This movie fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but did right, you so, write it down, Ben? Is yeah. That was right? that a note? <laughs> so me and Corey clearly are our team Unbreakable here. Uh, so let's talk about Split because you guys seem to like it more. Uh, do you think it's a successful film? Do you think it 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 sets out what it's trying to do and it's good at it financially it was the most successful film of the year right yeah was it yeah it, it, it well, it's cost, a bloom house yeah it cost nine house. million to make and it made a hundred million so as far as profitability goes uh it it landed yeah i forgot that it was a blum house fucking jason blum man i i can't i i, I was had that same idea i mean i'm sure lots of people had that same idea it's like look give me a million dollars i will make you 10 films for a hundred thousand dollars i hope I'm hoping one of them with my talent will be good and make a million dollars back. It's such a genius business model. It makes me, it blows my mind that he's the only one that, uh, the first one to, to be successful with it. I, I'm uh, kind of both bummed out that everything now in horror seems to be coming from Blumhouse, but I'm also yeah. very grateful. Even if I don't like a lot of their output, there's certainly things that, that we've talked about and had issues with here, uh, or I have at least. But I do love the fact that they're, they're doing it, you know. They're yeah, they he's are really getting made. Stuff. He's making movies, and it's not just horror. He's he's uh, done some art art house films and some uh, thrillers and dramas. Well, uh, some of his art house films are trying to be horror movies. Right, right, right. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the whole model is, you know, we're going to give you fifty movies. One of them will be good. <laughs> there's got to be a good one in there, and and he sticks to his budget. I read an article about like there's some J Lo thriller he did, and he got a real like a legit director to do it, and the director's like, look, you got J Lo, you got me. The movie's almost there. If we have this one big climax, it'll be a successful movie. I just need like seven hundred thousand dollars more to film it. He's like, no. It's like, no. Literally, I'm telling you, it's like this small extra investment will make this movie uh, much better. It'll make it. It'll go from dud to hit. All I need is the extra money. No, but but all I need is money. He goes, look, I don't make money by just going over budget every time. I have a hard rule. That's it. Use what you have. And he stuck to it, and the movie tanked. But it doesn't matter because he didn't lose that extra seven hundred thousand on any other films, and it's such a brilliant business model. I love it. Well, uh, it, 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 I do agree with that. You don't dress up a turd and expect <laughs> the turd to suddenly shine at the end. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and so, yeah, okay. So, Split's the most most profitable. I see. I think Split's enjoyable. I think it's good, but I, I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm cooler on it than most people. I thought it was okay. I thought it could have been better. The strength of that one performance is better than most of the stuff in all of his other movies. You really think James McAvoy is that good? 
Like, yeah, like, the, part where, the part where he's dancing as the kid is like is so fucking great. But like, <laughs> actors, actors don't really get the opportunity to do to do a role like that where you can switch around and do yeah. these broad stereotypes, but do mm-hmm. a bunch of them in the same scene. I feel like I don't know. I feel like the role it's not easier to do, but it's easier to be uh, praised. And I don't know if like you. I bet you not just Phoenix. You could have like 10, 20, 30 actors in that role, and it would be such an interesting acting exercise that we would probably oh. be saying the same thing about any of them. That's fine, but at least, but he didn't fail, so he still deserves. That's true. Okay, all right, okay, I can buy and, that. And I'll hundred percent that scene oh. where you see his little legs shoot up on the screen when he's when he's doing the break dancing, and all you see is the legs come up. That is a <laughs> that is an adorable fucking moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the break dance, absolutely. I don't know. I really, I only got into a couple of the role. They're, they they just seemed like they were good. They just seemed very two dimensional to me. Uh, what do you think about the flashbacks where officer Piscatella is her uncle on the camping trip? <laughs> I'm so glad. I, I think I was video gaming with Matt actually, or, or maybe it was with uh, the other guys on our team. But at some point a couple of weeks ago, I was like, what's that movie where Brad William Hankey plays no. a rapist in the forest. And I couldn't think of it. I was like, Oh, it's driving me nuts. And it, turned, it was fucking split. And I kept yelling uh, deliverance at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know, I have no I don't I don't think they were good I don't think they were bad I don't know the whole where it leads to I don't like I really don't like the idea of mental illness as a superpower, and I've certainly written stories like that in my emo years uh, and um, I just you know, at one point the beast lets her go at the end and he goes uh, but I, being broken is being evolved and I think that's a uh, an irresponsible. <sighs> kind of philosophy to have in terms of you don't want people thinking their depression and their psych you know their uh, their mental illnesses are, are actually attri- attributes because i get the feeling that oh it makes you feel different and it makes you feel like you you know you get the world more than other people i think that's an unhealthy idea to promote but also i think it's kind of lazy screenwriting it's just like look out look how different i'm being i'm saying that the scars is what protects her and it just it's that seems like very that's something I wrote when I was eighteen, and M Night Shyamalan's not eighteen; he's forty something. He should be better than that. I don't so, know. Marilyn Manson is a supervillain. You're you're also <laughs> you kind of so he they make a comment where um, he says you are whatever you believe you are. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you don't have to necessarily assume that it's a mental illness that caused Kevin to have twenty three, twenty four personalities. He could have just believed he wanted to be 24 different people and one was an amalgamation of, of animals that could get shot with buckshot four times but it, it's but the strength that... coming out of him because he's tired of being made fun of like one of the personalities is tired of being teased and made fun of and and hurt uh, a couple of the other personalities are tired of being let down so they want something more powerful to manifest to give them yeah. the ability to rise to the top so i'm not saying you're Incorrect. I do agree with what you're saying. I just think that there is probably another way you could look at it that sure, doesn't but I'm exploit not really, I'm not mental illness. About the beat. And I'm not talking about really the beat, uh, James McAvoy. I'm really talking more about Anna Steele Joy because that's what they do. They set up all these scenes that uh, she's gone through this uh, sexual assault and this trauma, and that's made her stronger. And that I can, that I can, all right, fine. It's a little exploitative, but yeah, sure, being it's made her stronger. But the fact that he sees her scars and he goes, being broken is being more evolved. That's the kind of glorification of, uh, but of being depressed and being sad and being yeah. Uh, yeah but you could also just say like having dealt with life makes you a stronger human. But he doesn't so, know that. He all he saw was that she cuts herself or has been attacked. That's all he he's going on. He sees her as not not the the weak. Uh, the, so there's this scene where they're talking about how the the cheerleaders come up and they they tease him and they have him put his hand on their breasts and stuff and they. They kind of draw them out, and and it's it's a game to them, and that I think is part of the manifestation of the beast as well, is that he sees this what is supposed to be purity and this easy life, and he says those are the weak, those are the ones I want to destroy. But if, if he sees that you've suffered too, then that's who he's going to relate to, and that's the hard life that he's like, okay, so you're not like these two girls that I've been watching that are the perfect prey for the beast. You're like me you're damaged you understand pain it's a it's a shitty metaphor but it's also mm-hmm. kind of like banky and and uh chasing amy giving the the excuse of like he says something that's really shitty and later on kevin smith had to defend it to somebody saying well why do you say that in your film he's like well i have the guy who's always wrong say it in the film <laughs> you know so it, it's not like i'm saying this is the right message okay. it's a message of the character 
character. Yeah, that's what a, yes, that's what a moron says. So you know, <laughs> I so I, I I get it. So in universe, all of these themes do work, and and the, the, there is a logic to them. I know I I feel, and I don't know, but I feel like M Night Shot is using that cl- crutch of it's in everything where the like the autism is superpower, and the just uh, I don't I don't know. Autism is a superpower. But let me ask you this really important question. Not a superpower. What happens in the last 25 minutes of the movie? You missed the split? You missed the end of split? <laughs> what the fuck, man? Why I don't mean, you watch the ends and then just like cut out like 15 minutes of the middle? 20 minutes guys, fuck off. Ben is 100% the most loyal fan of this show. He knows that Matt never finishes a fucking movie. I don't never watch makes past it all the, the way credits. To the credits. Don't yes. put shit after the you credits. You have the... walked away from plenty of film where I've had to go back and say, but yeah. you missed this part. Yeah. Well, the credits yeah. mean we're done. Ben is the greatest pot fan ever. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> that works out a couple of things. Happens. Thomason, I, I, I like to call her Thomason because I can't remember her name. But I like her the witch, so that's what I call her. Uh, Anna Anna Taylor? Anna Tyler? Anna Taylor? Cowjoy. Anna Cowjoy. Um... <laughs> I, I I liked uh, I liked her in the witch. Yeah, she's great in the witch. I, I didn't, didn't, didn't even, even realize, realize that was her. Yeah, I didn't realize it until after I am to beat it the first time I seen. She's this gonna movie. play. She's gonna play Ilyana. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and what the new mutants? Oh, the new mutants. Yeah. yeah. There's my. There's if my... it ever comes out, the movie was finished Whoa. a year and a half ago. I don't. Know I collected it... that series, Ben. I remember going down to my corner shop, getting all those issues when they were coming out, like just yeah. praying that number three and number four would come out because it was taking forever. That the last hope, series, you know, I think that some of the casting for that New Mutants movie was really inspired. Um, but I hope it never comes out, and I hope that the Black Dark Phoenix movie never comes out. Well, the Dark yeah. Phoenix is definitely coming out. I don't know oh, if New Mutants will, but that's uh, false Marvel. Um, but also, they reshot all of New Mutants. Apparently, they cut it, like John Hamm was the villain, and they've replaced all of the villain scenes with a new villain. Did you say John Hamm? John Hamm was uh, uh, yeah. help me out. Help me out here, Corey. The uh, Mister Sinister who's, is who's Mister Sinister is the villain for New Mutants. Fuck that. I don't, I don't know, but he's. I forget. I, Although I he'd be, be a really good Mister Sinister. I, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not as uh, X Men as you guys, so I might be wrong. But um, I think Expert. that was. And also, he was in Legion, which is technically in the same uh, cinematic universe. So I was headcanon making it the same character, but it, it wasn't. Um, That's all Marvel. <laughs> um, uh, all I know I, is that my wife is actually interested in seeing a new mutants movie and my wife is not into comic book movies or comic books at all but because this is a horror themed movie yeah. she's like into it and I'm like fucking shit I ate at that fucking new mutants bar every month like I, I had the subscription when they used to extend it to your fucking house I love the new mutants I loved the uncanny x-men at that point in time like it was everything to me so that my I'm wife curious. will go see this? Fuck yes. <laughs> I'm curious what's wrong because, yeah, the trailer came out like two years ago at this point, uh, and it looked great. And I, like, I really wonder like what's keeping them from letting it go. Like, I think like- a lot of it has to do with the Fox-Marvel oh, merger, the, um, the Fox-Disney thing, is whether or not Disney would actually let them do it because, of course, you don't want to just put out the New Mutants and have it be just the New Mutants. You want to have at least a trilogy of films, right, right, and right. The, the worry is that Disney is going to say, well, fuck all the mutant stuff. We're going to just start over again. Yeah, so movie- why even put this movie out and lose the money that they're going to have for distribution on it when they can just direct a video at like the Generation Next uh, so do- TV but- movie? Then why not direct a video? I guess, unless you're saying they're waiting to see if the deal actually goes through. I think they're waiting to see. And I yeah. and maybe if they can take some of this and salvage it for a rebrand in the Marvel Universe. I feel like they could make money on it just on the, the cast alone and the fact yeah. that it's So but, uh, the, the yeah. villain was replaced with uh, so ham was replaced with antonio banderas uh, i mean i love banderas well but... now fuck it yeah but, and it... Uh, but is it is it a different character Did they no so so here's the thing the imdb has no character listed for him i found an article um that has eight potential or seven potential but it straight up says he will not be playing mr sinister uh, so it was literally they literally went out of their way to be like jack's wrong yeah so <laughs> i think i think ham facts. was playing mr jack's sinister wrong. and now they've rewritten it okay to not be him and every person that is listed I've never heard of. And like, okay, so if we're talking about this Fox Disney thing and, and they're, they're hesitant, blah, 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 I still can't see how they could go, oh, we'll make more money if John Hamm's not in the movie. 
I'm very curious what the story behind there is. Dark Phoenix, actually, I think it's all done and it's a much bigger budget, so it has to come out. But Ben might be right because Brian Singer is uh, persona non grata right now. So I don't know if they can release a film uh, by a, a, a rumored pedophile. Oof. Well, hey, he got credit for Bohemian Rhapsody and that just won a Golden Globe. And that's what raised and the, the fact that it won is like now what's making everybody like now he's on everybody's radar. So I will say, especially if it's Disney, uh, would you guys think, do you think there's a chance that the post credits of Avengers four will have uh, Hugh Jackman in it? Yes, I do. I think, cause I, I think that's, I, I, think that's no. I think that's the, 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 awesome. the only way you can like top and end the, the original phase one, two and three of MCU. If yeah, the else, over then, all this X Men shit sucks. They need to scrap it all. Yes. No, but I could see them being cynical, especially with Hugh Jackman. Like, yes, would, would everybody be better off if he's not Wolverine in the, in the new MCU? Yes, but I can, I can't if he's down for for it. And just what a fuck you, po- like what a mind blowing post credit sequence that would be. I, I could see them just giving in and just doing it. If it just turns out to be some dream sequence of Deadpool, <laughs> that would be even better. <laughs> I don't like the Deadpool movies. I can't. Get I know. I know. But it, it it would at least it would be something that would make sense. Because you're right. Because just... Deadpool would also be Disney, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. I, 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 yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that. I just hate the fact that Ryan Reynolds might actually end up in the MCU as Deadpool. Oh, God. I just hate him so much. <laughs> ben, do you dislike Deadpool as well? Um. I I don't really care. Just, I don't think I'm asking that, for a friend. I don't. Yeah, I don't think that Deadpool needs to be rated R by any means. Um, I I liked Deadpool when I was like 16 um, during the Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis run. Yeah, and it was like laugh out loud funny, mm-hmm. and so I like that. Um, and Spider Ham in, in the new Spider Man movie, Spider Ham has a similar kind of uh, thing as Deadpool in terms of the yeah. breaking the fourth wall and knowing he's a cartoon. And like that's that's rated PG, if anything, right? I don't know if it's PG thirteen, but that well, did... I, I don't know. It's the fourth wall stuff. I think it's just like that. He's so crass, and he talks about masturbating, and he talks about his schwanz and all this stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't, you know, I just the all. I wish all Fox X Men movies did not exist. I, I I don't see how you bring oh. Jackman back as Wolverine at this point when he was done playing the character, he put the cap on the character, and because I don't know how far forward you can go with Jackman as Wolverine. Plus, he's always well, been a really bad example of what to be Wolverine in a movie. Not because he's absolutely. bad, he's not because not, he's not a great actor, but because it's so not Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. No, I the I the only reason I could see them doing it is a he said I'm done ever playing Wolverine again unless uh, I can be in the Avengers. He literally said that. Mm-hmm. Um, B I could see Disney going. Yes, these are all great points, but Hugh Jackman as Wolverine will automatically be an extra fifty million dollars or something like that. And I could see I could see them doing it, even though I agree with everyone. Like he shouldn't be. Wolverine. I don't know. I don't. Can you do just Hugh Jackman and none of the other bullshit fake movie X Men? Like, if I was in charge, uh, I mean, I think the Fantastic Four is what's going to probably be the big. Oh yeah. Not, not. I don't think the X Men will come in uh, right away, just because it really does overpopulate a, the the universe with superpowers. Yeah. Uh, and they are they technically already have the Inhumans, but barely. Um, but I, if I was in charge, I think the way I would do it is I would make Avengers Five uh, a, a multiverse film. Yeah. And that way you have you have the X-Men universe, basically like the DC verse Marvel comics. You have uh, the Avengers universe, the MCU, and you have the X-Men and they cross paths for this limited movie or trilogy or whatever. That way it's an ensemble film. You don't have to push Hugh Jackman too much. You might kill him off like solo in the, the first film so he can get out of it. But he, you can say you've had him in the MCU and I could see them doing it that way and then doing a swan song to the, the Fox x-men movies that way where where you keep them they're now they're interacting with the uh, with dr strange and um black panther but at an arm's distance that's how i would do it who knows what the plans are going to be i think the fantastic four will probably be a mainstream mcu movie but can I, we just X-Men? It, it's fun <laughs> X-Men. I, I i think that the problem is is that the timing just didn't quite work out where disney gets the acquisition of the Fox properties in time to do the justice that they need to with the fact that we have a reality altering uh, storyline in 
Avengers yep. 3 and Avengers 4. Like, okay. this is the moment when you then say, okay, so we can fix this and we can bring in the X-Men, we can bring in the Fantastic Four, we can do all this stuff and make a new universe that makes sense yep. w- while including these other characters that haven't been a part of it, obviously, so we don't have to hide them in the 90s and some mystical story like they're doing with Captain Marvel, which, shit, I'm totally into Captain Marvel, don't get me wrong. But yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously we have to forego the reality that this couldn't have happened, but it did happen. That's why that's why I think a Jackman cameo could be possible. You know, uh, you know, it could be somebody like who knows what the what uh, undoing that snap, uh, what ramifications it could have had on reality. Or, or maybe it's even more explicit. And, you know, they, they, they retcon out uh, Downey Jr. and Captain America, whatever, whatever they do. Um, I could see them still having time uh, with this deal to last minute, although it is coming down to the clock last minute, have Hugh Jackman like uh, suddenly in New York City or whatever. And I, I, could, I could, and then they can go, look, all we need is that. They still have several years to then figure out how they're going to do it because uh, you don't have to really bring up the X-Men or anything in any of the, the next round of Marvel sequels. But uh, I could see them putting in Hugh Jackman for exactly that reason, just to be like, the, the, look what the snap did. Well, the other thing is what happens when Marvel is now introducing a lot of these characters into shows for their streaming service? Do we lose the the need to put them into giant blockbuster films but give them 10 episodes here and there on on disney streams and then hugh jackman doesn't have to spend years away from home getting jacked up but he can do something that's a little bit more subdued as a wolverine character and have some crossover potential with captain america or whatever that's a good point that depends on how well this disney streaming does i I, I, will probably do fine but what's that falcon bucky Falcon and Bucky, and there's another one they're doing. And uh, Scarlet, Loki, Witch. Doing a Scarlet Loki Witch and one. Vision are supposed to get a series together. I think Loki's getting a show. Yeah, well, I don't Moon Knight. No Moon Knight. I don't want to watch it. There, there should well, there should have been a Moon Knight uh, Netflix show. That yeah. that would have fit well in that universe. Yeah, but that's it would have. all. It would have. It's still a question of what's going to happen. All that Moon Knight is still one of the few. Feel I feel like if I could if I start a career as an actor, I feel like there's still room for me to get in the MCU somehow. And I think Moon Knight was is. Yeah, that would be a good role for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Isn't the biggest thing with with blockbuster films like getting people off their asses to go to a theater and spend the 10 bucks and and when you have a streaming service where you're already automatically going to have an audience kind of built in don't you eliminate the the biggest hurdle that you have of like how many shitty things have we watched on Netflix because it was on Netflix and now it's like well I know Netflix has shitty movies but I'll fucking watch bright I'll see what's yeah, up yeah yeah I, I I'm curious where this Disney how this Disney thing is going to go uh, I'm sure a lot of people will get it, but um, Nef- Netflix will be fine. You know, Netflix will be fine. HBO did the same fucking thing. They, they was all original programming, and, and then you know, now we just watch whatever cool movies they have on. And it actually came around full circle, I, I guess. Um, but I, I, Netflix will be fine. Um, I am curious if, if this Disney thing might blow up in their face, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, very possibly, but it, yeah, they've got so much. They own so much content now, so many IPs. That's the that, thing, and it's well, and, and these things are, the, is. The, the problem with these big multi corporation, multinational corporations is they all run on stockholders, and stockholders just want. They don't care how much money they're making. They're they care about how much money they're making more than they were last year. So right. you have to, it's the same problem with Apple. Apple has to keep coming out with these new shiny devices. It's not good enough that they have ninety percent of the market share with the iPhone six. They have to keep. <laughs> They they literally everybody has an iPhone, uh, you know, except for a certain amount of people, and they've pretty much peaked. And but uh, the the stock goes down because they their numbers didn't go up, even though but, it's still a ridiculous number. But that's because and we think, live we live in a world where it doesn't matter what you've done; it matters what you're continually doing. Exactly, and that's what's worried. That that that's what Disney. So I think Disney streaming will be successful. Even if it doesn't see, even if we all hate the streaming or we're not watching their shows for the next 10 years or so, the streaming is going to be successful because they are going, their numbers are going to gradually increase. And the, the stockholders, yeah, let's keep it going. Let's do it. Yeah, sure. Loki show, vision show. Let's do a rocket raccoon show. Sure. As long as people keep doing Disney plus eventually Disney plus will peak the same way Netflix has. Everybody has Netflix now. Everybody has Netflix. <laughs> Their problem, or, or a shared yeah. password from Netflix. Yeah, and their yeah. and their problem now is that nobody can nobody else can get Netflix. They literally can't get any new customers unless they they crack down on this this sharing password uh, thing. Which, but they really. But we also live in a world where Disney is like Apple, is like Google, is like Amazon, where the numbers don't matter because they'll start changing the metrics. They'll start telling yeah. you what they're going to tell you the numbers are, and yeah. and it doesn't matter. They don't have to tell you how much we sold of an item. All it matters is that the Alexa items were the best-selling product on Amazon on Black Friday, 
Cyber Monday or whatever. Uh, Apple only has to say we were this profitable as opposed to how many iPhones we sold. We don't have to give you shit. <laughs> we're telling you and you better enjoy it because we are the most powerful company on the fucking planet. And then they take over the country and then it's Waylon Yutani and, and we're living in uh, some kind of corporate dystopia. It'll, but we'll have a Bucky and Vision show. Right. It'll be great. Everybody loves Vision and Scarlet Witch. It'll be fun. I fucking hate them. It'll be like, uh, <laughs> it'll be like Moonlighting. Instead of Bruce Willis and Civil Shepherd, it'll be Viz and uh, Scarlet Witch. Oh, God. And they hate each other and they like each other. The will they, won't they? (laughs) And will they have robot babies? And eventually her her Eastern, uh, your vaguely Eastern European accent, which has gradually gone down with each time we've seen her. Eventually, she will literally just be like from like Brooklyn. Like Scarlet Witch will just say like, yeah, yeah, I'm from Sokovia. What's it to you? Yeah. But, But she gets to be a mutant again. (laughs) <laughs> that's the that's opportunity true. for her to not just be some creation she actually oh, yeah. gets to be the daughter of magneto yeah that would be great if you bring in ian mckellen the scarlet witch's dad that would be that's fun you so that's have, another thing have fun with this stuff they don't have to be so goddamn calculated there's an artist uh crisscross um who he did um he worked for milestone back in the day he, he's in stuff at marvel he did a really great series with peter david of uh, a different captain marvel like the son of the original captain marvel uh one of my favorite artists he posted something the other day where someone was saying, how do they do the X-Men if they recast now? He said someone came up with the idea of making Denzel the new Magneto. Ooh. Because in this case, instead of him being someone who who's had to go through the stuff in Germany, has gone through the uh, African-American oppression uh, here in the States and stuff. And that is another thing is that we see a lot of these characters have to change to be modern day because you can't have a 90 year old Magneto in a company. You're right. You can't have a Holocaust Magneto if it's taking place in the modern day. That's that's interesting. I like that. I'm very I'm no Dan Mulhall. I can't do impressions. Let me see if I can do this. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, (laughs) I'm trying to think of a Magneto line now. I, I blew it. I blew it. See, this is why I can't do impressions. All, all you need to do is that they fucked a cow person to make mutant children because isn't that what they changed his origin? Is like uh, he had sex with some sort of like mutated cow that was also, I don't know. A lot of weird stuff with the high evolutionary in comics. Stuff with high evolutionary shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, keep this comics, uh, keep the X Men talk going. I have to uh, use the little girl's room. Yeah. Do we have to? You know, the one thing that the MCU has done that I really like is they've taken characters that I have not enjoyed in the comics. And they've made them palpable and compelling and um, just, like, easier for me to wrap my head around. And Vision and Scarlet Witch are one of them. Um, I did not understand Black Panther as a comics reader. And then the movie made it very clear. Um, They made the Guardians of the Galaxy very compelling. But, Corey, can you tell me, like, what Carol Danvers' deal is? Why, Why should I care about Carol Danvers? Well, if you're going off of the comics, and, and and this is what I think the movies have done successfully and the comics haven't done, is they've been able to take 50 to 70 to 100 years of, of stories and distill them to the bare essence and to make something that makes sense. The comics are constantly trying to follow a continuity. They're trying yeah. to regulate stories that happened in 1942 to, to things that happened in 2017 and make them all work together. And where you've seen DC flip that switch over and over again and say, oh, we're going to start over and here's Superman and here's Batman and here's Wonder Woman. But for some reason, here's four incarnations of Robin. Here's uh, 101 Green Lantern stories that have to make sense in some way, even though they shouldn't. Marvel is still trying to distill. Spider-Man took place in this time and made web shooters himself and made a costume himself, even though that makes no sense. And the Fantastic Four... We're part of the the trying to go into space and stuff. And it's like, well, that shouldn't make sense if they're only 20 years old, uh, although they have kids of various ages. Right. Um, so we'll how does this all work? The movies forwent all of that and said, well, we started them today, which is what the Ultimate Universe did. So if you are trying to figure out what Carol Danvers is, look to the Ultimate Universe versions of her. And as opposed to being the person who kind of like took over from Marvel and got some of his powers... It, it's more of a, she's a badass pilot. She's someone who worked for the government. I think in this movie, it looks like she's actually lived on an alien planet her whole life. And instead of being the half alien on Earth, she's a half Earthling on an alien planet and how all that comes together. So what it's going to be when she shows up and interacts with 
a, a very early version of Nick Fury and an early version of Agent Coulson? I don't know. Uh, it, it's going to be a matter of how successfully Brie Larson does in the role. I, I think she's going to be great, not just from past experience of Marvel movies of them doing stuff that I like, but also because I, I dig her, and I, I think that this character is important for Marvel, but I'm not as worried about the origin because I'm not a giant fan. I had the first issue of, of Miss Marvel back when it came out. I had the first issue of Spider-Woman when it came out, but these characters are obviously very different now. I knew Carol Danvers more as binary, hopping around with the X-Men for years when Rogue had to- taken her memories and powers. Um, and that's that's part that's inherent to the character that I don't think they're going to be able to approach in the films, just like they didn't really do a lot with Tony's drinking. Tony's drinking was replaced by Tony being a party sick here. from that, that disease that he had. Oh, yeah. But... I just, I just run with it. Just see if it's one that appeals to you. I, the trailers do nothing for me. I, that doesn't mean anything. Maybe the movie might be amazing. The movie might be terrible. The trailers do literally nothing for me. I think the Kree power stuff is cool. Like the CGI when she's in space flying around. She looks great. She does look great. Looks, looks good enough. Um, you know, for me, she was always a, a footnote. She was always the character that Rogue stole powers from. <laughs> um, so... Uh, but that's you know, also like the generic Supergirl it's character for Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. It's, it's 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 funny because we'll regulate a character for a number of years. I think she's also one of the numerous characters where it's like they got her pregnant one time and then had her have an adult kid yeah. uh, because he time traveled or whatever and became romantically linked to him. A rapist. Yeah, that's fucking weird, dude. Fucking comics were weird. Eighties were a weird fucking time. Nineties yeah. were a weird fucking time. Is that a Jim Shooter story? I don't. I don't think so. I feel like that's someone else that came in and that took over from Shooter stuff. But maybe it could I'm be. I'm curious. Uh, have you guys seen the new Spider-Man film? Not yet. Is it good? The Spider Verse. Uh, I or Homecoming. It's, it's I uh, in uh, Sp- Spider Verse. I'm sorry. Um, it's it's the most fun I've had in a, in a movie theater in a while. I I think it's one of the best uh, <coughs> best that, comic book movies ever. Who who plays Spider-Man? Uh, the everybody. I can't think of the so Miles Morales. I can't think of the guys. Shamik Moore, maybe he was in the 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 Get Down, the uh, the Netflix show by uh, the you know, Moulin Rouge guy, Romeo and Juliet guy, ba- Baz Luhrmann. Um, he was not. He's not super well known. Uh, uh, Uncle Aaron was uh, Maharshala Ali, and the two Peter Parkers were Chris Pine and Jake Johnson. Wait, um, there's two Peter Parkers. Uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the film. Oh, and Lee Schreiber is incredible as Kingpin. Um, he, he might actually do, be a better Kingpin than uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Well, I mean, Vincent D'Onofrio is great, but and that they're two completely different interpretations of the character, but they're both really good. Well, Michael um, Clark Duncan was a good Kingpin. It was not yeah, a great movie, yeah, but he was good. Show. It was just oh, yeah. it was a different interpretation. Rest in peace. Yeah, um, we, we were roommates when I saw that movie, Jack. Yeah, we were. It was 2003, 16 years ago uh, next month. Um, that was the first time I took LSD. I thought the movie was great. Oh, wow. So then no wonder we got along. I was I was sober, and for years I thought that movie was amazing. I, was, I, thought, it, I, I thought that movie was great. Daredevil is like one of my favorite comics, So uh, my favorite heroes. So I fell in love with that movie, and it took me a long time to really come to terms with the fact that it's utter garbage. But it's utter garbage in hindsight. In that moment, at the time that we were seeing it, was it? Well, yeah, the only thing you could compare it to was Spider-Man and X-Men, which were both both obviously better. Oh, Blade. Um, but, yeah, and, and Blade. It's, it's no, still, and then, and then the, there's an Electra sequel that doesn't have Daredevil in it. What which a, I haven't seen. What a, what a wasted opportunity. Uh, and I think is Stick in that? He might be. Yeah, uh, Stick is in the uh, sequel. Glenn is so great. Right. Stick, he's the best part of that show. So, oh, Scott Glenn in the new, the new yeah, Stick? Yeah, he's my favorite yeah. part. Yeah, he's fantastic. Um, and... Yeah, that, you can't hear that popping. It's driving me. Nuts. I just heard it, but it just I don't get it. I don't, it's just literally when my laptop is on and it's relatively near my my speaker system, and my speaker system is off. The power is off, so it's somehow still putting electrical signals into the cables that is making sound come out of the speakers. The power is off. <laughs> um. So back to split. Um, oh my god. We might as well just try for a second. Uh. Another thing I'm worried about in Glass is that they give us this thing at the end of Split where to get Kevin back into the charge of his body is we we 
tell him his full name, which is very mix a flick. Uh, <laughs> or or, yeah. or Captain, or Captain Marvel, the Shazam version. Uh, and so I wonder if that's another thing that's going to be like a giant reveal in, in Glass of like, oh, but then all of a sudden Glass says his real name and, and takes his powers away or something. But it doesn't work anymore, right? They, they figured out how to... It worked, and then he, he succumbs to it again because we know that the kid can overpower Kevin and come back to the light. Right, right, right. Can you right. tell me what happens at the end of the movie? So um, she, uh, the, the psychiatrist comes to uh, and, and tries to break them out, and she writes He's down on a piece. Her. He gives her the... Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. but she writes down, uh, you know, say his Wendell, name. Wendell Crumb. Yeah, <laughs> say his name backwards three times, and he will go back into the fifth dimension. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically that. And she escapes the main character. So she sees the beast is eating one of them. I think the other one also died. Uh, yeah. Eating her? Yeah, he's eating he, the, the... he devours one. And by devours, I mean, he eats a little bit. It, it, there was a kids in the hall skit where they're, they've got the guy on trial because he ate everybody on the plane because the plane, uh, didn't leave the tarmac for 20 minutes. It's, it's <laughs> like, you didn't even eat. Like all of one person, you ate a little bit of one person and a little of the next person. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, so she's escaping, and he that manages to start bending the bars because he's so strong, and he's a, he's he's about to catch her, and she says his name, um, and he does become Kevin again, the nor who we we haven't met yet. He's like the regular guy, he's and he's like, like, I got the shotgun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tells yeah. her to get. Why? So you keep asking us to tell you the ending, and then well, we tell you, and, and then he knows like, yeah, it. Watch the whole thing. <laughs> and she shoots him. All right, what what what, do you, what more do you want from us? And then, the credits? Do you want us to name read the credits? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Who meets okay, who's so, David Dunn at the end of the movie? Who, who? I'm sorry. Who meets up with David Dunn at the end of the movie? Nobody. Nobody. Of consequence. It's so it's just tacked like, on. Meanwhile, in a diner. Yeah, yeah. It, that's exactly 100 percent what it is. It's in a diner. What's going on? Meanwhile, <laughs> he, meanwhile. Guess who's eating at a fucking diner? So here's <laughs> here's the bullshit. Out. Here's here's the absolute bullshit line of like they're watching TV and they go, yeah, this guy who held these girls captive and and killed two of them, and killed the doctor and everything, goes by this name, the Horde. And some rando says, oh, this reminds me of that story from 17 years ago because that guy had a name that he went by, even though it had nothing else similar. <laughs> it's just because he went by glass and this guy's they're calling the Horde. It's like. Nothing now let me mention this thing in random so that the guy sitting next to me can perk up and say, hey, bitch, that was me. Suck my dick. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Glass, literally, like, if, if I heard about a, a muscular man who can climb walls and he uh, and he eats two teenage girls, I'm not going to go, that reminds me of that crazy terrorist 15 years ago. What was this? Oh, Osama bin Laden. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> two things go hand in hand. But I did, I did I, but whatever, it works. They what called a piece of glass. shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll, my favorite is how the kid says it in the beginning. He's like, "They call me Mister Glass because I break like glass." Like, oh, good, that's nice. Oh, I, I, whatever. What, what? Your standards are too high, Ben. You you live uh, you live your life with uh, too high of standards. In the seventies, we had uh, Ben Breen singing Mister Cellophane because you can see right through me and walk right by me. <laughs> so I can see kids calling someone Mister Glass because he breaks like glass. That was actually okay. And I think that kid was probably the best actor in that movie. Really? Wow. Yeah. I think that kid was great. I, I think that it didn't transfer well to Samuel Jackson taking it over. I, I get your con your your issues with him. Uh, but I, I agree with Jack. I think it's more how it was written than him actually um, like playing the great, part. The, and the wow. kid the kid was a good actor. Uh McAvoy, maybe my least favorite acting he did was as the beast. Did anybody notice his beast voice was basically Chris Farley's Matt Foley? <laughs> he's, basically just like, he's like you know he's like they're broken <laughs> if you're broken you're more evolved uh I, hold on just a second there bill shakespeare you know he's basically just <laughs> well drawn out like chicago accent it was very yeah, yeah, yeah i did enjoy his tryout for the chippendales dancer though i thought that was a inspired <laughs> that was a very good scene yeah i was the patrick swayze's last role it was great but so much of the, the thing was like the doctor is telling us things about this beast. Oh, you're going to turn into this beast creature who can walk on walls. Is it just stuck to them and everything? It's like, how much fucking laying out do they give to tell us the powers and, and abilities of this creature that we weren't seeing? And it's like, I don't believe any of this thing. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, here it fucking happens. Here he is walking on walls. And it that's the part that I have a problem with is that I look at glass and I think they're going to lean more into that. And that stuff looked really shitty. 
Yeah, they've, maybe it got maybe it got more of a budget this time around. I don't know if it's a Blumhouse or I mean, I'm sure if you have see this purposely, like the psychiatrist isn't a big name. It could have been anybody. It could have been an older older actress. It could have been a Julianne Moore. That this new one, basically, the role is, uh, is once Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson. So I could see you having a name actor in that, but they really don't. Even James McAvoy uh, is a is a get, but he's not a Bruce Willis uh, at Sixth Sense get. Uh, and I think Blum Blumhouse a lot of the, the you know movies don't have to be expensive, but uh, uh, well, it's going to be Disney this time because okay, Disney yeah. owns the rights to the characters for. Yeah, if, you're, if you're paying the Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson salaries, the, the budget's got to be up. So maybe the, the maybe the CGI budget will also be raised. Maybe. I think the budget is also going to be up because of the fact that it was the most successful film of 2017 budget. So maybe it won't look so bad. Maybe it'll actually look really cool. How but when I see the commercials, it, it doesn't look good. <laughs> How much money did did uh, did Split make? Matt, what Matt I Corey, saw, Corey said 100 million. Yeah, it was like 100 million to the nine million it cost. Is what? is what I remember reading. What a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, do you think? Uh, do you? Th- I, I don't. Know. I was disappointed. I didn't see more of the oh, identity. Jesus, Corey! It made two hundred and seventy-eight point five million. But I mean, the hundred million is the profitability of it. Step one: collect underpants. What? Step two: How? how hold on. Three, hold five. on. Let's get back to this profit. If it if it cost nine million, and the box office made two hundred and seventy-eight point five million. Distribution, oh, advertising, oh, all of this other stuff. That. All right. right. And, and I'm just going off of numbers that I read. They they're right. definitely can be argued in a lot of different ways. But yeah, no, you're right. I, I knew it made closer than the 270 mark, but it, what I had read was that the profitability was considered so high because it made $100 million in profitability versus the $9 million. <clears throat> you know, you never really think about that stuff. Well, that's... I remember Gregor mentioning once on Elsner, it's the accountability of how... Lord of the Rings is considered a failure because they did this creative accounting in the background of like they charge all these other things to the the bottom line of those film series, and so it's considered a failure even though it made billions of dollars. Yeah, huh. it's 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 amazing. It's amazing how these it works. Fucking like, bean counters. Just give just give me, just give me a million dollars. I don't, they, Disney can give me a million dollars right now, not to make a movie. I just like just give me a million dollars. They will. They won't. Even, they won't even like notice it's gone. It will affect. Literally nothing. Nothing will be affected if they give me a million dollars. I just want a million dollars. Jack, I'll give you a million if you'll take a post-dated check. Okay. Hilarious. Th- thanks, Uncle Matt. Thank you. It's more of a <laughs> Simpsons reference than anything. But okay. um, the post-dated oh, check. Simpsons reference. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Uh, the post-date? Yeah, All Bart right. gets the checkbook. I can take advantage of one of those cash check. for gold people, and like I can run that shit through real easy. So I'll... I'll take your post-dated check. Fuck yeah. <laughs> You're not going to um, want to cash that until 2045. <laughs> do you, uh, so do you think his dad died at a train in the train crash from the beginning of Unbreakable? That's exactly. Yeah. Oh, That's shit. What, that is exactly what they imply. And the reason that the beast comes out on the train is because the train is what sets him off. That whole memory of that so is what think, causes the beast to manifest. Do you think then the glass the glass will have the same ending as uh, Captain America's Civil War? Oh where my god! The board finds out glass killed his parents <laughs> and, and like he turns on glass. Oh shit. <laughs> that seems like a very likely thing to happen. Yeah. I want to see the end of glass be that glass finds a way to harness the powers that these other two guys and he becomes uh, powerful himself. He steals the powers away. Because that's the only thing I can see is to have him be considered the the winner of this. Is yeah. to have this be this movie. We already know his history. We know his background. So it can't be another fucking origin story. Uh, yeah. It has to be a summation of like him getting the advantage. Yeah. And I understand that the advantage for him has been mental so far. But just having these two guys who have incredibly similar abilities... The bulletproofness, yeah. the the strength, and everything else like that. I've never seen done walk on walls, but fuck it, you know, just put a pu- couple paint cans on his back. He probably can. <laughs> They've got to do something to make Glass be the the ultimate villain of this. Yeah, he's got to use because his otherwise yeah. the Horde should be, yeah, or, or, or Paulson should be as a psychiatrist. Who do you who do you think of the three of them has the biggest dick? Back of boy. Uh, Samuel Jackson's character has the biggest dick, but it's in 19 pieces. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, it couldn't really take a pummeling. It's going to crack in half. The Beast probably has got a monster dog. That's what I'm saying. He can change his brain chemistry. He can, like, make more blood go down yeah. to his... I'm going to try that. I'm yeah. going to... When we're done here, I'm going to just think about, you know what? 
You got a six foot dick. I, I'm sure there's a whole Wake split penis subreddit. Our positive thinking. Yeah, <laughs> our positive. The, gen, the genitals of the the split universe, the uh, six one six train universe, or whatever it's called. <laughs> East Track 7-Eleven or something weird. Yeah. Uh, it's because it's named after the train that crashes. So here's another thing, Jack. You were talking earlier about the manifestation of the beast abilities mm-hmm. and powers. That's very much in the vein of the mutants from X-Men and, and New Mutants. And everything. Because you get your mutation. A lot of people say puberty, and a lot of them do have a puberty, but it's from some sort of traumatic change um, that happens over time. So some people get it when they're kids, some people get it when they're older, but it's usually something that brings on that power that's already inherent in them. So mm-hmm. the fact that he manifests his other personality and that personality brings the powers with him goes back to comics. Yeah. So, so, uh, cause it's funny. Cause I was like, when you guys told me you were doing this movie, it's like, yeah, that's a real bit of a stretch for podcast of terror. And that's like, well, no split is a horror movie. Yeah. And I don't really see it as a super villain origin story or a superhero story. I see it as a horror film that uh, happens to be part of, you know, it's going to be a super villain, but I didn't see it as a super right. villain movie. And that's interesting because you're basically that argument would say Shyamalan knew this whole time that it was going to be like the anti unbreakable. It wasn't just a, a tacky add on at the end. He really does see this as the same themes and same sequel, uh, a sequel to Unbreakable. That's interesting. No, he planned this movie when he was making, he planned aspects of this movie, the story and stuff, when he was making Unbreakable. There were scenes that were supposed to be of Kevin in Unbreakable. Yeah, uh, the was going to be the villain at the end, right? I don't know about that, but he just, I know that there were things that he like waited and years later put together in this. I, I, it's never, I think that the audience didn't know that that's what this was. But it's just that that ending feels tacked on because there's no reason for it other than I want this to connect this universe. He doesn't do anything in the movie to make it feel like they're in the same universe. It's no. just in that last second of like, oh, I heard a name. That name reminds me of this other name for no reason at all. <laughs> and and here's David Dunn drinking his coffee. Like, yeah, I guess uh, I'm just here to get a check. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, on top of that, the, the, I do. There are a couple of references where they say superpowers in in Split, which I I don't re- I didn't remember the first time. I was like, that's interesting. Where like she's talking to a colleague, and they're like, we're not going to let you do the uh, the symposium, uh, the international symposium. She's like, why not? And he's like, your ideas are crazy. And she's like, I, I think you genuinely can get like superpowers. And like, I, I, like they have. Oh, that's what he says. He goes, he goes, you act like they have powers or something. And it's right. just it's all. It, it was very. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. I, I, it's interesting to think of Split not just as a horror film, but as a, as a. No, it's a, it's a, a like Unbreakable, which didn't tell you it was a superhero origin movie. Until you went and saw it, and, Is that and true? I think you said that in the introduction, and I was only fifteen, so I don't remember the marketing campaign. But like, I don't remember I thought, much of a marketing campaign. I thought but, I knew going in it was about a superhero, but I, I, I didn't at all. But I don't remember seeing a lot of commercials for it either. It was kind of like a a, a whim to go see it. I saw it with a couple of friends, but none of us knew until we came out, and we we're like, "Wow, that was pretty cool." But it 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 at least leads you along the way of what it's doing. This leads you along the way of a serial killer movie. And then the end, it's like, but we're doing this to introduce you to the super villain. Like, if this had not done that, if it hadn't been the ultimate ending was a guy with powers is the the last personality, I think it would have been a better film. It would have been a better story. It would have made more sense. It's just a thriller, not a supernatural. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know what I would like better. I guess I've seen it, those thriller movies, so I guess I'm glad this one's different. Like the, the girl who's gone through so much trauma being the ultimate survivor of another traumatic event like this, that's an interesting story. There's a lot to that that I could like in this. But it, it feels like I told you all that shit just to get you to point B so I could tell you point C. Yeah. No, that's he, a great point. He's not, he's not a great storyteller. There's a lot of fat and bunk and bullshit. He's got and a great eye. It, it, he's got a good eye, but there's yeah. a lot of fake psychology – and fake phenomenology. It's 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 just weird. He's also the Stan Lee of his own universe. Yeah. Yeah. Because he shows up in this film, he shows up in yeah. Unbreakable, he shows up in all of his other stuff. I wondered if it was the same character. I kind of wondered if it was like uh he he's a drunk or no, he's a drug dealer at the the game, and then he goes on to kill the preacher's wife in signs and and now he's like trying to make ends meet by working with a psychiatrist who he probably has he had to get a bunch of therapy with himself. 
And he and he lost his great job as a doctor because because uh, he lost his patient, a uh, well known psychiatrist. I, lo- I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's amazing. So, uh, guys, I gotta I gotta go soon, um, but I wanna but I can't go without talking about Ninety Day Fiance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, I was laughing too hard. What'd you say? <laughs> Can I? Can we take just a few minutes to talk about Ninety Day Fiance? I just I listened to you fucking assholes talk about X Men for forty five <laughs> minutes. We can talk about Ninety Day Fiance. <laughs> I still don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's great. That shit went down this weekend. Ninety Day Fiance is is lit. Oh god, it's such oh, a great fucking show. Man, I fell asleep. I fell asleep in the last twenty minutes of Ninety Day Fiance. <laughs> <laughs> How did it end? Describe the last ten days to oh, us, please. How did it end? All right. So the last thing that happened on the Ninety Day Fiance Instagram is that Larissa and Colt are divorced. Yeah, yeah. Larissa and Colt are divorced. Yeah, we cracked up his face, and then there's all kinds of other. Did, yeah, but did, did you see why she freaked out? Over porn, I think. Yeah, she found uh, that he had signed up to and purchased a porn video. Let me That's tell it. you, if my wife hit me every time I did that, I would not have any deep. Also, who or you would ejaculate video? a lot. <laughs> who pays for? I don't, who pays for porn? He's an idiot. He's Suckers. so Norman Bates, it's unbelievable. How he literally yeah. quotes Norman Bates. Yeah. yeah. Did you notice on uh, when they were driving to the reunion show that he had the seatbelt go under his titty? <laughs> he has such a sick set of man tits. What? Corey, what? Do you know the show? What's that? Does Corey know the show? What channel is it on? TLC. I, I know that Matt didn't do it. Fucking what do you? What did you say? It's on TBS. TLC. <laughs> it's on TLC. <laughs> oh. And it takes it documents people trying to get a K one marriage visa. Mm-hmm. So it's people that are trying to get green cards, but some of them are scammers and some of them are in love. And they're all fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. If they're scams and they're being videotaped, then how do they get visas? Because a lot of times it's morons. stupid people. So there's a dude from they're Wisconsin stupid. that's on it. Like they're breaking the law. That oh, they're, oh, my God. Yeah. And with the one in Wisconsin. Dude from Baraboo. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. It'll all be worth it as long as Lita turns out to be the world's greatest doctor. <laughs> so they'll probably be like a 15 years later where we're checking in on them as naturalized citizens and stuff. I hope so. Well, a lot of the relationships fall apart. Yeah. But the chick he's talking about is married she got married to a dude in wisconsin and on the show was like yeah i just moved here for my medical career and he was just like it's okay she likes me (laughs) and that's what the most of them are they're like yeah i yeah yeah, you're all right and they're like they love me the show but you can't be on the show that would would break the whole it would ruin everything that's so stupid i I feel kind of torn because as ridiculous as it sounds i just watched the anniversary special about the bobbits and it's like, God, if we were not enwrapped in that when that shit was happening, I would have watched a TLC show of that a hundred fucking percent. Yeah. I, I ten years ago, I watched every episode of John Kate plus eight in like a week. I marathon oh. that thing, and I loved that. Too, and I was like following them on social media, and I just thought it was such a cute story. Now I know why you're miserable all the time. <laughs> this was before any of the scandals and everything. I was so heartbroken when John turned out to be cheating on on Kate. And then when Kate became like kind of a stage, it was just a very sad story. But those first couple I mean, of that, years, Kate's those haircut are... is the the haircut I was talking about earlier. Really, that's hilarious. I'm pretty sure that is 100 percent it. Like like half of an eight, we've come full circle. Oh fuck! All right, Shyamalans. Yeah, ben, dude. what are you gonna rank? This? Ben, Ben, what are you gonna rank this movie? One to five. Both of them. Both movies. Both of them. They're both pieces of shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, the the uh, Unbreakable. Uh, I hope to never watch it again. You can go zero to five. Z- uh, Pretty one. sure Unbreakable is getting a zero. Okay. I'll give it a one. I go to one. All right. Uh, okay, split. Split. Um, out of five. Uh, a three. Huh. Ah, split down the middle. I'm I'm curious to what 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 glass is like, um, but I think these movies are pieces of shit. I'll give you a hint: half full. Yeah. Uh. yeah. I um I like the village. Might be my favorite one of his movies. Yeah, it's uh, not and I like signs. I love signs. Um, but mostly, what I was taken by while wa- when watching um, uh, uh, Unbreakable was how unpleasant. It was, and it took me a while to realize that that was like a symptom of it being a thriller. But it just moves from like one unpleasant, uncomfortable scenario. Yeah, it's very sad. Everybody's just moping around. No happy scenes in his movies. I, I, it's, 
I'm not into that. But it it does end happy for his relationship with his wife. I mean, the That's family true. itself comes back together, and that that I think is different because it's usually a little bit darker. Although I guess the kid gets happier with his mom at the end of Six Sense, but he his family heals. Yeah, but that's why yeah, Sign, I mean, that's why Signs 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 actually has uh, humor throughout the whole film. Yes, it's one of the only ones. Yeah, well, Lady in the Water too. Lady in the Water's got quote unquote humor. That was Paul Giamatti. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. I I uh, the the comic book stuff. I can't get past. I can't get past it. <laughs> Just it looks like there's more of that in in Glass. Well, I'm certain. He's like, he just pulls stuff out of his hat. He's like, I believe that comics were a form of history we've forgotten to tell. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, you know what's... I mean, you could also just take it from the standpoint that he's fucking retarded. He's, he's nuts. Yeah. yeah. He's out of his mind. Here's my hope with the class, is that Sarah Paulson is going to be on the new uh, series from the guy who does American Horror Story and stuff. I forget his name. Um, uh, not um, a big fan of the, the shows and everything. Ryan I think a lot Murphy? of Ryan Murphy's, yeah, Ryan Murphy's stuff. I think is is more missed than hit for me, but she's going to be playing a young nurse ratchet. So I hope in glass she just sits there and puts a pillow over everybody's faces. <laughs> I like they're in bird box. All right, guys. See you later. Bye later, buddy. See you later, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't finish these awful movies. <laughs> you, didn't okay. you didn't finish the awful podcast watched, either. So you watched the whole movie. You know how long are we get a podcast we do for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Still pretty short for Jack being on. Matt hasn't watch, peed nine times yet. I gotta watch True Detective tonight. Oh, oh fuck! Oh, I yeah. forgot that starts tonight. Boom. <sighs> True Detective. So behind on TV. Good day. All right, take it buddy. Man, we're gonna go see Spider Man. It's so good. When do you want? When do you want to do that? You think it's gonna be in? Yeah, let's let's after? schedule it now. Let's pick a theater. Yeah, we'll that's fine. Tic- we'll get the tickets on the phone right now, live on the air. Right yeah, now? that's fine. <laughs> we'll Thanks, Matt. Matt. Yeah, Bye. take care, man. I was gonna see you again. Later, guys. Good. Yeah. good. Later. Um so Matt, what would you give this movie? Let's get this let's since we're all ranking it, let's get the ranking out of the way. But and we're not done though, are we? Do you need to get going? I, I have I have a little longer. I fully intended I expected this to be over three hours. No, I don't I told I told you okay. when you asked okay. me. No, nope, that, that's very, very. This has been a long week. If it stops, it stops. I just, I. That's why I, I started. That's why I wanted to do this earlier because I, I want to get the rankings out of the way in case this went so four we, hours. I just wanted no, to make no, sure it wasn't that late. That way, that way, I can hang out up until the my last drop of energy, and we don't have to worry about wrapping up the show. Fair enough. Um, I gave it a one, uh, Unbreakable one point five, and split a four. Okay, Corey. Actually, I'm almost exactly the opposite of that. I'm I probably a four on Unbreakable, and yeah, Split 1.5 sounds solid. Hmm. Okay, I will do a three for Split and a 3.5 for Unbreakable, and I think there's a 0.5 margin of error for either of those. <laughs> Does that work? Can yeah. you put margin of error into your spreadsheet? Yep, I am right now. <laughs> margin. Uh, here's a couple of notes left I had about the movie. Uh, I would wanted to see more of the identities. Uh, yeah, it too. works that you can't really overload them. Uh, and it was cool when they all started coming out at the very end. Um, but if you have 24 to work with, and I know you want to save some for the sequels, I would have, it would have been curious to see. And the ones we did see, they seemed a lot. I mean, I know we only spent like 30 seconds with them, but they seemed much less interesting. Like they, they seemed, just like, they seemed were, like they were, they were just tacked on. They didn't yeah, seem like they were pressured at all. Yeah. I didn't like that. Um, so one of the personalities, Jade were, um, Casey finds the videos on the computer. Like one of the ones where you hear the audio is of her, I think. And then she comes out later. So yeah. it's like, yeah. did, did they and only Orwell do that? Too. What's that? Jade Jay, Jay Norwell, I think, are the, the, the two we see in the videos are all, the two we. Uh, the two that yeah. come out later. So it's like, did you only do that so that you really? knew already? Yeah, probably. You're probably right. Yeah. Right. Uh. No, we, we don't have to treat the audience so dumb. I would like no, I and it's like, it's like, and I know you've made this point on your on the Simpsons podcast when it still was uh, happening. But it's like sometimes a joke happens, and then the 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 answer is spoon fed, and it's like you don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like we like a little challenge. Well, well people used to like a little challenge. Apparently, they don't anymore. Or yeah, I don't. Know. You, you like Deadpool? You tell me. I because I I like dick and fart jokes and i think deadpool is just 
a fun dick and fart joke I movie. I can I absolutely see Matt of all of all superhero movies. That's the one that he's going to lean Be- towards, and that's what I like about Deadpool is yeah. because it it adds to the sense of like everybody can pick one. Well, and I, it, see, I like dick and fart jokes too. I love dick and fart jokes. I just think I like good dick and fart jokes. And I like Rick and Mar- Morty has good dick and fart jokes. Yes, that's true. Deadpool, I think, has very lazy where he's, they're not even jokes. He's saying dick and fart. And that's yeah. the joke. He's I think, dick and fart. I that's, think, no, that's not, no. I, but I'm be better some, than that, Matt. I'm Listen not saying I'm not. Be, <laughs> be better. Be God. best. I like Rick and Morty too. But sometimes I just really like a, an easy dick joke. Like just at face value, a dick joke. Oh, I think I like my dicks harder. I'm sorry, but I sometimes I like a good hard dick too. Like I'm not like I, it, it. Just it depends on the mood. I don't. I I like. I, don't, I think Deadpool. But think here's the other thing. Dumb, when I go Deadpool. when I go see Deadpool, I know what I'm getting. I know I'm getting straightforward dick. If I'm going to sit down and watch Rick and Morty, guy? I want to think about my dick a little more. I gotta say, I like Deadpool more than I like Logan because I think Logan oh. had a lot of a lot of things that were okay, but I think that its opinion of itself was much higher than what it deserved. Oh. Where I think Deadpool knew exactly what it was going to be and if Logan, went a hundred percent into it. If, yeah, if Logan wasn't Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, uh, if you take out the fact that it's an X Men movie, it would be a, just a you know mediocre drama about like a road trip drama with the old man. You know, there's there's been three thousand movies like Logan out in the last 30 years. And mm-hmm. people just happened to have superpowers. That's, that's why. And it was a sequel to very silly movies that weren't like it. But I, so I like, I, I think Logan's successful at being a X-Men, X-Men film, but you're right. It's totally overrated. I still think it's better than Deadpool. Do you guys like family guy? See like family guy, I can watch it. And I know I don't watch it, but when I watch it, there's usually three, four, five, six jokes in a family guy where I go, that's fucking brilliant. And then there's like 90 jokes where I'm like, what, what are you not even trying? Well, the problem is the Family Guy got rid of that ten jokes a long oh, really? few seasons ago. Have the ten brilliant ones. They, 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 it's so rare. We still watch it, but we both kind of look at it like, "Why are we still watching this?" Because it's and easy it, to digest too. It's a very yeah, and watchable. it's better than The Simpsons. <laughs> it's it's a exactly it's a watchable show. Yeah, American Dad's better. That's what I've heard, and I I did watch a bunch of American Dad years ago. Um, my my girlfriend at the time was a big American Dad fan, so I would I would she would put it on at like two in the morning. She she slept late, and so yeah, I, I would I I watched a lot of American Dad in that context. I never marathoned it, and it, yeah, it seemed seemed pretty good. Yeah, I, I think uh, they put out the Cleveland show just to try to make Family Guy look funny. Still, <laughs> I'll I'll tell you what, like Family Guy, I started watching it again. It's not it's not what it was, right? But it's still once in a while. Like I think. Of all the shows that have been around for fifteen plus years, South Park is still the best. South, right. South Park, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think the it, the drop in quality for South Park is just is huge too. Yes. Maybe not as Simpsons and Family Guy, but it was such but, a high. And mm-hmm. there, once in a while, you get a great episode. Mm-hmm. And on, on, they, on the Simpsons, I've only seen that with in the context of my my podcast. We've only seen one legitimately good episode. And for me, I still don't think that episode is as good as the classic years. No. Whereas South mm. Park, every once in a while, I think it's gotten much worse in the last, like, say, th- not much worse. It's still a good show. But, like, uh, the line of it gradually going down while the other shows are going straight down, I feel like it's starting it's... to get steeper. But the Amazon episode yeah. I thought was very good. The season finale this year, the, the two-part Amazon episode, I thought that was the best South Park in the last, like, three or four years. Um, South Park, I don't, I don't like it as much when they started incorporating like season long story arcs. Oh, I like, I, I like that. I don't mind that. Cause it, they don't, it doesn't usually get in the way. Well, and I'm not saying I dislike it, but I think that was kind of the point in which it started to, to downslope because they, that's they, a good point. Yeah. 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 They, they stopped three. relying so heavily on everything that's pop culture and they started actually having a story. Now it's still funny, but like, I, I don't, I couldn't tell you the last time I finished a full Simpsons, a new Simpsons episode. Well, the thing about South Park is that it's usually very topical. That yeah. that sense of like they start an episode that week and finish it that week and then make it to air just a couple of days later. That that was what was always very impressive about it. So you would just be watching it, and yeah, it would seem like some of the story was like there's a plot and b plot, and the b plot is the stuff that's topical, and the a plot is the stuff that's not. But they they work seamlessly to make it all happen. Um, but now it's all every episode yeah, is one of those. Now every episode is an issue episode. Every yeah. single one. 
Whereas back in its prime, right. they did they had episodes that were evergreen. Like uh, the the my favorite episode is the season eight premiere with the uh, anime and the Japanese weapons. Uh, <laughs> I, like, you know, my Scott, favorite part Scott is the Tinnaman, song. You know, Scott Tinnaman must die. It doesn't isn't topical. That could have came out any, in right. any episode. And like I think of one of South Park's problems is they felt like this is their identity, and maybe it is. If like if you if there's so many animated shows now, you have to like lean into your niche. But I I miss the more well-rounded South Park, <laughs> and I also don't like a lot of the fucking I, like anti PC uh, politics. The, the, right. I, that that I, I can't stand that shit. But the the thing with Family Guy to me, Jack, you might understand this is you you, you probably know about comedians who like to lean into the audience hating what they're doing. Like they'll do an act and and you'll just see them bomb. Like I really cannot stand uh, one of the guys on the current uh, Saturday Night Live. Um, Pete Davidson? Kyle Mooney. No, Kyle Mooney. Oh, oh, Kyle really? Mooney oh come on. Not do a single thing, a single thing on that show that I like. And it's not about him as a person, but his characters are basically about, like, he does that comedian who comes out and does, like, the worst jokes ever, and he just bombs. <laughs> and it's supposed to be funny, but it's never funny. But that's, like, his entire career in that show to me is just yeah. him not being funny. But do some you- people, like, a lot of comedians really seem to like when a bit just doesn't go anywhere where the audience hates it and it's kind of like the same thing of the internet of trolls of like we're just trolling the audience and family guy trolls the audience a lot yeah i don't like that i don't like that that. they want here's a 20 minute musical act because we know people will complain about it on the internet tomorrow here's here's a just like leaning into as far into physically abusing a woman character because we know it's not funny uh but let's just make as harsh a statement as possible and just like they do things to piss people off. They killed Brian off on the series for a while. Yeah, I remember that. The dog. And they put on the most annoying character. And yep. it was to make the most annoying character exist mm-hmm. so that you'll you'll want Brian back. But it's not like Brian's not still terrible. But it was <laughs> like they tried to they made things specifically not funny with that character for no, a long I time. Like I, I I don't like that. I have very Seth MacFarlane is very interesting to me. I'm very happy for his success because it's ridiculous like how young and super talented guy and consistent and he's just crazy talented and he has an incredible work ethic and i think that's uh missing with a lot of people if somebody has a work ethic of like him or a seacrest i go okay you know what you deserve some millions of dollars um and it's funny most of his things for me are very hit and miss family guy i said there's jokes in one episode that i love and that i hate uh his movies i think the same thing can have very funny uh, overall aren't great and then i'm watching the orville now because i'm a big star trek fan and it's fun i i i think it's a failure of a show i don't mm-hmm. think it's very good and i keep watching it because it is very good at what star trek next generation was good at just being disposable kind of watchable you know interesting and i like what it's doing too i like that it, I, most people critics seem to hate that it's basically next gen it's like not even trying to be different i don't mind that at all i like that and i like the working class like kind of jokes of uh like they talk like regular people talk but they're doing it so like in the, one of the last episodes they go uh now sir they've let, let now they're firing 20 photons at us and seth mcfarlane in the, in the middle of the action scene goes neat uh and like that's funny to me i what i don't like is again lazy fart and dick jokes when they do a fit fart and, like it's funny because it's a dick joke but it's in space that i don't like <laughs> so it's right. a dick in space yeah, so so it's it's amazing to me how like no matter like what you just described for me is exactly what I've been going through with Orville and I I guess, I guess it's I, I don't know I guess it's just McFarlane I don't know yeah I mean I I think McFarlane's very funny and I think that Early Family Guy was more his baby than it is now and I think that it's it's tanked because he's spread himself thin he's done a lot of other stuff and and I believe that if it wasn't for the fact that it was such an institution for Fox that he probably would have ended it years ago and moved on to something else. And he's moved on, but the show's still going. And all he has to do is show up and do voices, Mm. Uh, all the voices, but whatever. Um, (laughs) But I I watched the first couple episodes of the Orville and I just couldn't get into it because I found the humor was not good humor. If it was an actual funny show, I would enjoy it. I I have no problem with the next gen comparisons because I'm not watching uh, discovery. I'm not into that at all, but I would uh, like no, I, I to agree. have that show. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. And it's just because sometimes the jokes are good. There's an episode that's really well done where they're watching Seinfeld on the big screen in the bridge. That's very funny. Why wouldn't you watch a sitcom? Why wouldn't you use the bridge screen as Netflix? That's great. Is that any more or less ridiculous than listening to the Beastie Boys in the third <laughs> Star Trek movie? 
Yeah. So like that's a, but they need more jokes like that. A lot of the jokes are again, it's just dick jokes in space. It's 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 like it, it adds nothing. I would rather it be really funny or really sci-fi. It it's just not enough of either for it's me. It's very media. It's actually very mediocre drama. And that's the other thing. If you're gonna just be a drama and not even be funny and literally just be a dramatic next gen ripoff, the drama's so lazy. It's so just people telling their feelings. It's just I don't know. It's very bad writing. If it wasn't a sci-fi sh- like Star Trek Next Generation, the characters are always doing things that you would go, oh, in that situation, that's what I would do. Or maybe that's not what I would do is like, I get why he did that. Bad writing is when somebody does something to, for the story and you, you literally go, why, why would they do that? You know, right. if you see yourself going, why would they do that to something you're watching? That's because it's bad writing. And the, the next gen was very good at not having that. You know, the special effects could be story lame. The story could be lame. It could be a crusher episode, but every character is, is actually very uh, unique to itself. And every character does what you would think they would do in that situation. Orville is literally just like, now we're going to go uh, down to the, and, and fight the uh, monsters with no weapons. Shouldn't we bring a weapon? Ah, we're good. It's like, and then they have a scene where they don't have weapons. And then what, how do they get out of this one? And it's very, just, it's just, you know, they bring weapons. Yeah. Does that make but, sense? No, I, I, no. Like you're not preaching to the the uninitiated here. That, that's how I feel about it. And 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 there are people I know who are really into it. I, I think uh, Brad, who runs this network and everything, really likes Orville. And I don't take any issue with it. I like Matt. I'm also not the biggest sci-fi person in the world. So yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's I mean, really easy for me to yeah. say that show's not for me. <laughs> nobody's perfect. I'm really into boobs. So sci-fi is kind of well. Never then you should watch thing. the Orville because there's some uh, really attractive people on that show. Well, watch Watch Total Recall. You like boobs? <laughs> Not <laughs> the remake. <laughs> there's the, the one that he has three of them. <laughs> when I was in eighth grade, I was dating a girl with giant cans, and I told her that that was my favorite part of the movie, and I think she broke up with me because of I it. love that. I love that. That's supposed to be sexy, and like in the movie, it works. You know, oh. it's, and it's weird. It's total recall. But can you imagine, like, you you meet a girl, you you met her on uh, <laughs> what the fuck? yeah, and you bring her home, and you're you're making out. You had a couple of drinks, and you open, you pull over her sweater, sweater, and she just has three breasts. I would probably be like, <laughs> you know, like, like it, it I, just. It fulfills a Douglas Adams thing for me. That's all it was. It was like the triple-breasted prostitute of Eroticon Six from uh, from the Hitchhiker's Guide. That's I was like, okay, now I've seen a triple-breasted prostitute in a movie. Great, <laughs> yeah. you know, bucket list. Nothing sexy about it. Uh, my goodness. Um, I had oh, I didn't like this in Split. I only have two le- two last notes. I didn't like that the psychiatrist was like. Um, the whole time she wouldn't believe that he's, you know, like what you were saying before about it, why she wouldn't believe there's a 24th personality, but she also wouldn't believe she was so skeptical. She's like one that can climb walls. That's ridiculous. But her whole like career seems to be around proving that this could happen. And like, she's talking about body chemistry and stuff. And every time she's talking to somebody in this movie, besides, uh, um, uh, James McAvoy, she's like defending the idea that these can give you superpowers. And then as soon as the, the breeze comes up, she's like, no, that's impossible. Well, also her whole shtick of like, fuck, I, I realize that I'm being manipulated by this guy. I can call him out on the fact that I know that he's doing something wrong and the personalities that are coming to the head are dangerous and have dangerous thoughts and are trying to bring out something more dangerous. So I'm just going to randomly show up at this fucking zoo in the middle of the night and walk in by myself <laughs> and hope he doesn't murder me. It was very, yeah, yeah. Again, again, if you're asking yourself, why would the character do that? It's not great writing. Yeah. And it's like, uh, hey, I, I'm actually going to get to leave here, but instead, let me use your restroom <laughs> so I can investigate further in a way that I don't know the police could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Or at least go during the day with somebody, for Christ's sake. Also, why is the whole thing taking place in a zoo? And where the fuck are the other people who work in all of those lockers that are just an earshot away from girls who are screaming and getting murdered. <laughs> Why is he the only one who has access to this section until the next day when a guy shuts up and says, you don't belong here. Fuck, nobody belongs here. <laughs> and does he live there? Is that Kevin's job? Right. Or is that or is that the, a job they got after they had permanently taken over from Kevin? Also, at what point in a conversation on a walkie-talkie do you decide that you're just not going to believe anything a young girl is saying to you about being kidnapped and just hang up? <laughs> <laughs> you can't hang up a walkie, though. 
and he th- that's a guy that they come out later on when he's when the dude is walking her out of the place he sees her he looks up and he goes oh shit yeah, he makes i'm the- gonna get fired yeah yeah oh my god i know a white person killed these girls but i'm gonna get blamed because yeah brother you didn't do anything <laughs> I don't know. I I would oh God. I would hate if I ever got a call like that. Like help. I'm being because I I would. It would take. You would have to really convince me it wasn't a, like a prank or something. And then I would be like, oh, should I call nine one one? But I always call nine one one. But then I got to put my pants. I will. On. I will take the stitches for snitches because I don't give a shit. I'm yeah. calling the police. Yeah. I, may, I don't know. Maybe it's a New York thing. Because what? if if I had that, if I had to take that hard philosophy, I'd probably have to call the cops every five minutes. There's always somebody screaming or you, running away outside. Well, Jack, what you really should do is call zero one one eight nine 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 eight eight one nine 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 one one nine seven two five. Ah, this jumps over my head. That uh, was from the, the IT crowd. IT crowd. I have it if you want to watch it. I really think you would like it. I know, I know. It's on the list. Everybody tells me to watch it. I can get it for oh, you. Oh, God. I, I, I just watched it like last year. I, I finally sat and went through the whole series, but I think that's from the first episode. At this, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's in the first series, at least. At this, yeah. there's, like, there's like 50 shows I really have to watch. It's like That's like there's, that's top 10. There's like 10 I really have to watch, and I just, I just haven't had time. Oh, watch, shit. Watch Norville. I can only watch these terrible shows that are on my DVR because I can't commit to like an actual marathon of another show anymore. I'm like halfway through the fourth season of Bosch. Like, and uh, that's um, Titus Welliver? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love him. He's a great actor. It, that is a good damn show. Uh, but the episode I just watched was really rough. And for me to not go on to the next four episodes to come <laughs> up and do this was hard for me. Oh man, I no, I get it. I uh, what was because I watched Split and Unbreakable this weekend, so I that was like that was my TV time for the weekend. I didn't get to catch up on. I caught a little up on Voyager. That's what I'm doing, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I got a, there's a couple of shows. I I might do Mar- marvelous Miss Maisel. Now. Oh no no, I want to do Killing Eve. That's the show I, I told myself I would do. Oh yeah, and now True Detective. I got to do True Detective. <sighs> yeah, now the True Detective is starting again. I have to see if I can wipe the taste of the second season out of my mouth. I, I never finished it. I bend the second season. Them. I don't want any new shows to come out. Give me like a year to catch up. <clears throat> Corporate like, starting thought, again soon too. I thought the Punisher was back today and I was and like I turned it on and it's like it is available next Friday or something like that. And I was relieved. I was like, oh thank God I don't have to sit through twelve episodes of the Punisher yet. But I'm gonna watch him. I that's my OCD, I guess. I, I didn't make it through the second season of Iron Fist, but I don't know how I made it through the first season of Iron Fist. <laughs> uh, I like, I like Iron Daredevil I, season three was so good that it's just like shit. Now I feel bad. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I think I don't think the Punisher is supposed to be very good. I, I don't know. I like the first season of the Punisher. I enjoyed it. I, yeah, I, good. I didn't have the problems with it. I think some Punisher purists did, but I was never a Punisher fan. Yeah, even Iron Fist, uh, you know, which was probably the most flawed one. I, I did. I don't think any of them are bad. I just they're none of them are good. Like great, even like Daredevil at its peak, it was. They're always like four episodes too long. I, I think in in a lot of the it, the first season of Luke Cage did it, where they like changed the villain it, halfway it through. Broke it up into two seasons, basically, and and it just it feels so like. Hey, we had something really good going, but now we're going to fuck this up. Uh, second season of Luke Cage was a little bit of a struggle for me. I think there was some good stuff there, but it was still it was not as watchable as the first season was. Iron Fist just never seemed to improve from the first season on. I watched it for Colleen Wing. She's uh, great, yeah. Yeah, I, I would have much rather it was a Daughters of the Dragon show as opposed to Iron Fist or Luke, really. I could see Disney doing that. I could see because if Disney... St- brings them back to their streaming service, but with uh, more toothless and less bloody. I, I could see them doing a, a, a like a PG-13 uh, Daughters of the Dragon show. Where they G.I. Joe it and like, everybody's shooting lasers at each other. <laughs> nobody gets hit. <laughs> oh, that ship just blew up, but there's a parachute you coming that, out. But they do that. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the, the first uh, Disney Marvel show, they, yep. nobody uses guns. They use icers. They tranquilize you. Until it switches up half, partway through that first season, and then you just see blood dripping down somebody's <laughs> hands. You're like, "Oh shit, got real." <laughs> but they were the Disney lawyers weren't looking that day. Yeah. Uh, excuse no, me. I'll be right back. Yeah. yeah. Talk amongst yourselves. God, I was just gonna think. I'm like, "Is do I should I, should I pee? Should I make a tink tink break? Or and now Jack's no, taking a pisser break? Pause and come back. Dude. No, nope. 
because I don't want to leave you here by yourself on YouTube because it is very uncomfortable. It's happened to me. That's okay. I mean, it's happened to me too. I just Garth it from Wayne's World <laughs> into the screen. All right, you're Garth in it. I don't like this. Uh, I don't know Stephen Strait, but apparently he's friends with Brandon. So hello, Stephen. Uh, welcome to the chat. Thank you for coming by. Uh, I saw Beatmaster tell me to fuck off earlier or to shut up, Meg. That's all well and good. I don't know. I've only caught a little bit of the chat here and there because it's hard to like talk so much on the show and then uh, see what you guys are doing. I don't know. I fucking the Disney thing. It's like I don't believe that the Netflix shows are going to come over to Disney. I, I don't think they're going to keep those actors. I don't think they're going to keep those storylines. I think they're going to start all over because doesn't don't the shows stay with Netflix? Don't they? retain them so it's like we're not gonna have you continue your your story over here when you have to find the first few episodes somewhere else it's the same thing as what they've had to do with fox and uh star wars if they don't get those back and they can't publish them themselves so i i'm kind of really iffy on it and it's too bad because i think that those shows for all the the faults that i see in them here and there i think they're good Have you ever peed? Have you ever pushed your pee stream so hard that you've gotten lightheaded? Oh yeah, I'm lightheaded okay. all the time. I just, <laughs> I just did that. I was like, I'm trying to piss so quickly, I'm gonna pass out. You gotta understand, my my dick is the most powerful portion of my body. So <laughs> when it's doing something, the rest of me just kind of has to slag and fall over. Wow. I just wow. have a hole in the middle of the bathroom floor, and that's what I. Hope that it's going to land in. Well, you should work on your aim. It's not aim. It's like I, I blacked out, and so I just I have one of those uh, public restrooms at a gas station kind of things. It's just like, Ooh. Hope it all goes downhill. I would. Uh, God, I missed. I missed that, huh? You didn't <laughs> miss it. You just yeah. weren't here for it. Oh, I like that. That's that's almost like a, a Hallmark card. <laughs> way, you didn't, I'll tell that the next time I I poor Ben I I didn't go to his wedding and I really wanted to go and I couldn't go I had to drop out and uh, because yeah, weddings I, are terrible. Uh, there's, there's a lot of reasons, but uh, I I don't like reason I didn't I didn't even like going to my own wedding so. No, I wanted to go. I was dying to go. I, yeah. Circumstances kept me. But uh, I should have sent that card. Uh, I didn't miss it. I just, I just, I wasn't, just wasn't there. there. <laughs> <laughs> that has to exist. Somewhere. Now I'm gonna look uh, for it. I like my wedding. Um, uh, tell me about your wedding, guys. Your weddings. I, uh, I, I would like to think uh, if uh, I had more money to travel and uh, I had known you guys then, I would have, I would have came. I would have been at table nine. Um. Well, Corey, Corey, when did you get married? I think we should do this uh, in chronological order. So about five years ago. Okay, so I guess I won because we're. Seven and a half or something. Okay, all right. So uh, before we move on, so you, you you've been married seven and a half years. How long have you been in a relationship with your wife, Matt? Uh, just over ten years. Ten. And Corey, how long have you been in a relationship with your forty five? Nineteen. Yeah. See, so he kind of wins. He just so okay. The hey, papers. you want you want him to go first? Then no, I wasn't sure to say anything about going first. I'm just, I, I'm just saying, like I, yeah. I'm longest just... relationship was my last five years. Yeah, so the, I guess if we're going with that, this is the the first time. This is the longest relationship I've ever been in by far. The only other long term girlfriend I had was like one year, and yeah, her yeah. I've, her I've dad had, yeah. would tell me every time she was single, even when Alyssa and I were engaged and living together. Yeah, I've only had two girlfriends as an adult, and uh, and one long term one, like for a year, two years, or whatever, in uh, high well high school, and then. Maybe two or three, like month long, two long, two month long. You know, when I was a teenager. Yeah. Uh, but I've only had two two relationships as an adult, and one was like two and a half years, and one was like five. But um, yeah, I don't know about I don't know how my wedding would go, but I want to know what your what like what was your wedding? Was like a big family wedding? Was so it, uh, I, 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 okay, what do you want to know? Like what specific. Was, what was your wedding song? That would get set the mood for me. the first song we danced to. 
don't don't you get like a wedding song? Is that isn't that what I don't know? I, I don't the, even know what finger the ring goes on. It's it's uh, your wedding song is the song that you dance to. I think. Yeah. So our yeah. first the first our first dance as a married couple was Little Hell by City and Color. Okay. And Corey, what was yours? Uh, we didn't have one. We didn't have any music. I, I actually that's not quite true. Uh, he didn't pay my the friend, licensing. Stepfather, it was the, it was Gregorian chant. My my friend's stepfather, uh, who's a very talented musician, showed up with a guitar and amp and everything. Oh, that's awesome! But we didn't yeah. plan on having any music, so the my wedding was kind of like Charlie Brown's Christmas tree, <laughs> where it was supposed to be very simple, very you know basic, and people showed up and kind of brought more to it. Okay, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I, I don't know what my uh, I was I when I thought I was going to marry my last girlfriend. I, I it looked like it was going to be just a city hall and uh, go to a nice place to eat thing kind of thing. Um, but I who it depends on who I meet. I could see myself. I, I don't know. I, I I like smaller weddings. I think they're more intimate. I think there's something to it. Um, ours was not because Small? no, my mom invited all of her friends. So it was like a whole catering hall. You got a whole catering hall. Oh, it was. It was. It was at a hotel in Oshkosh, um, right off the highway. So okay. So the ceremony was at a place called the Payne Art Mansion in Oshkosh. Payne, and right there in the name, huh? P A I N E. Oh, okay. um, it's actually a, it's, a, it's a super fucking cool place, but we could only have like eighty people invited to the ceremony itself. Okay. So we had to do like staggered invitations. So it was like, who did we want at the ceremony? Who, and then who did we want at dinner? And then who did we only want to invite to the reception? So that was a fucking nightmare. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, um, but that was really cool. It was in November. And oddly enough, it was like 60 degrees in November in Wisconsin, which doesn't happen. <laughs> so God was shining on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we have pictures outside and stuff, and it was really cool. Um, I, I don't remember much of the ceremony. You drunk? Um, no. So <clears throat> you like customary to get your, your, your spouse a gift. And, um, in high school, one of my, my best friend died in a car accident and, um, there was, it was three of us. It was me, my friend, Billy, my friend, Nate, Nate is the one that passed away. Billy and I still talk to this day. I was best man in his wedding and I wish he was best man in mine, but I have a brother. So yeah, yeah, no, it's always good to go with the brother. I like that I have a brother. <laughs> it, it, it'll 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 keep a couple a couple of my close friends from getting offended. So when my brother was married, I was not his best man. Oh, and he got married after me, but that's a different story. Um, so Alyssa got me, um, cufflinks with Nate's pictures in them. Oh, that's that's yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah, so I, I so I wore those, and it was before the ceremony, so I naturally started crying. You know emotional yeah, yeah, emotions are high that day yeah and uh, one of the guys that stood up is uh, my longtime friend james from kansas who owns this glassware company who has the shitter was full cup <laughs> um and i had got him a really nice bottle of scotch he likes scotch so that was his groomsman's gift was this bottle of scotch and, and a flask so when i start fucking tearing up he just hands me the flask so i drank some scotch so i was not drunk but it was just like there are only bits and pieces of that portion of the day that i remember plus you're running on so much adrenaline that yeah i barely slept the night before Uh, you know i was i was staying in a hotel and i didn't even get to sleep in my own hotel room i slept in someone else's because i just couldn't sleep um we had a nacho cheese fountain that was like one of the one of the few things that i really wanted i'm like this will be really cool instead of chocolate let's do nacho cheese and by the time I got to it, because every time you go, like you walk five feet, someone stops you. Yeah. So it's like I get to the nacho cheese fountain and I'm fucking hungry and it's gone. Everyone <laughs> ate it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So the oh, only no. other thing, uh, my wife really likes Spotted Cow, which is a local to Wisconsin beer. My dad's like, I will buy you guys a quarter barrel. Well, they put the fucking tapper out. So by the time we got to the bar, that was gone. Oh. So I was like, "Oh God damn it!" So yeah, and so it's your wedding, you kind of had to expect this. Um, it, yeah, it was. It was just the only other thing I remember is someone who was not invited showed up and started drinking beer, and we had to be like, "Hey, that guy has like he can stay, but he can't. He doesn't get free beer." And then he left. Um, <laughs> fast forward, all of a sudden it's midnight. I'm like, "Holy shit, we made it to the end of the night!" And um, one of the few bands that I wanted to have played by the DJ, he didn't play them until everyone was leaving, which I thought was kind of strange, but yeah, weird. Uh, 
backwards. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Um, so we're, we're we're fast forward to our room because it's our wedding night. Mm-hmm. No, it's no, gonna like go it. down. And Alyssa's wow. like, "Do we have to?" And I'm like, "Fuck yes, we have to." <laughs> so I let her eat some think, cheese, and then we know. got. I don't, the, I don't think most couples uh, bang on their wedding. I think they. I don't think so either. Uh, we had we had discussed like, I mean, I guess all. All this full disclosure here is like we were saying, like, hey, we're not going to have sex for three months leading up to our wedding, and we'll we'll have sex on our wedding night, and that'll be like, you know. So that's why I was like, this is happening. I'm like, I don't care if you're awake or not, this is happening. (laughs) And it was very short, and (laughs) I fucking, yeah, it's just. Why would you want to start off the marriage on that note? This is it. Here's what you get. This is all you get for the rest of your life. No, because well, I mean, that way she can tell her friends every time. Last night was better than my wedding night. Yeah, <laughs> she's not. It's yeah. You set the bar real low. You can always. Uh, Where'd you go on your honeymoon? Honestly, Minneapolis. Just want a yeah, we were we were gonna go to there's a there's a place. Um, it's like two hours north of the cities, and it's called the Viking Inn. And it's like an all-inclusive hotel, but it's like you live like a fucking Viking. So it's like, like it's everyone like stone, and there's like bear rugs. And, yep, and you like, drink out of a big out. stone oh mug, and every you know it's just family style. And um, leading up to it, Alyssa was just like, you know, I, don't, I just don't want to go. And you know, in November driving to the you know northern Minnesota, it's always a crapshoot. Um, Whose idea was it to do the honeymoon at the Viking suite? It was mutual. Okay. Yeah. So we I'm changed. Forcing it on her. No, 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 no. Yeah, it was something we saw on TV and we're like, that'd be really cool. Um, so we, we changed our minds, decided to just go to Minneapolis because we have friends out there. Um, uh, our friend's band, Johnny Rook, was playing. And um, Johnny Rook is like an acoustic band mixed with like crack. So it's like they're they're a straight acoustic rock band, but they're like super fast, really like, high energy parts. And like there's actual screaming in it. We used to, I met them one uh, and when I was in the when I was in my last band, Sky and the Execution. We would play with them in Minneapolis. They would come. Um, I still stay at one of the dudes' houses, so I still talk to him. So that it was like what we did, and they ended up breaking up shortly thereafter. So it was like really cool. Um, Way to Yoko Ono it, Matt. <laughs> I showed up and everything fell apart. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it would, you know, we just decided to go hang out with our friends instead, and it was like that sounds, well, well, that sounds great, though. That sounds like a great time. We had we had fun. Honeymoon? It's not like I don't I don't know if we necessarily would have had a good time if we went to the Viking Inn. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I mean so what at do least you do this, after the sex, it's you know, yeah. It's, Everyone heard the walls are shaking. There's cum oh, dripping off the walls. Oh gosh, well, just I'm like a, real. Vikings. Yeah, I'm a messy fucker. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so we just decided to hang out with our friends, and that's awesome. Yeah, I took her to Universal Studios a couple years later. Very cool. Very not cool. for me, not her. She hates The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, what did you do for your honeymoon? Uh, everything about my wedding was the opposite Anal. of Matt's. Um. So I was unemployed. So instead, of, what, so instead of Vikings, what you went to uh, ancient Japanese ninja. <laughs> we went to the other section of Westworld. Uh, no, so <laughs> I was unemployed for about a year, a little over a year uh, before our wedding, and it was it was a matter of like we'd been planning our wedding, and then I got laid off from from Best Buy, and we kind of were like, should we just go ahead and do it because we've been waiting this long? We bought the house instead of getting married. And the house turned out to be a big mistake, but uh, let's just let's just go ahead and get married. And we talked about eloping, but we had went to our friend's wedding, and it was my friend or, or Aaron's friend Rebecca and uh, and Rob. They got married at Rebecca's parents' farm uh, in their what was essentially their front yard, and it was so sweet. And we talked about it, and we had looked at different places to get married locally and everything. And I'm like, God, it, we just really loved. Rebecca's parents place so much and we talked to Rebecca and Rebecca talked to her parents her parents are the greatest people in the world and they said sure so we'll nice. host your wedding uh, so nice. yeah. yeah so we went up there we we rented a, a tent for outdoors we actually got married in the backyard so it was at least different uh, I invited my mom my mom said you have to invite your aunt Holly Ray or she'll be really pissed at you you don't piss off aunt Holly Ray uh, so my mom my stepfather my aunt uh my uncle charles who was the uncle that i modeled myself after as a teenager was a guy with long hair and bands and stuff 
uh, my favorite person who has been performing weddings for a number of years. Uh, he, he's an ordained minister. Uh, he came out to perform the ceremony. It was kind of like, I want to ask Uncle Charles. I don't expect to make the trip to California from Michigan, but he did. My Uncle Kenny came, and then all our friends that were local. It was about a three-hour drive to where we were in Red Bluff from, from where we lived in Sonoma County. All my friends came up. We all basically stayed at the same hotel for the weekend, and uh, I showed up at, at the wedding. Now, Aaron had uh, terrific cramps that day. <laughs> So she gets on some pills that my Aunt Holly Ray gives her, and she's blitzed for most of the day on this medication between that and the pain. And I show up, and immediately my uncle comes up and sees me. He goes, all right, so I need to talk with you about you know where, where the, the musician's going to play. And I'm like, what musician? And where's this? And I walk in, and it's like everything happened when I wasn't there. I like tried to do some pre-setup the night before. But I show up and it's all very different and everybody's there and it's all set up and it's just beautiful. Oh, that's uh, that's amazing. Yeah, we had gotten a caterer to bring food. We had uh, tiered cupcakes. So it looked like a wedding cake, but it was cupcakes going up. And the, the topper was a giant cupcake. <laughs> uh, so the wedding, the wedding happens. It's wonderful. It's everything I want. It's not all of the production. It's just really simple. It's our friend's. We hang out afterwards. If I had had to pick a best man, it would have been my best friend, Ann, uh, who was there for it. Uh, Aaron kind of had her friend Mike stand with her, but not exactly. We didn't choose anybody, but that it was always kind of implied. My friends had thrown me a impromptu bachelor party the Friday before at our usual D&D game. And then one of my best friends, Michelle, made a Batgirl cake uh, mm-hmm. with um, with breasts on and everything and then shove part of it into her chest and then shove my face into her chest. Oh so it was God. really awesome <laughs> because I told her that she was one of my best friends and she just was so impressed with that, that uh, that's how that happened. Um, and then the night after I went to San Francisco to see a taping of the horror movie show that records down there locally. And they have a bunch, of, they have a live band and they have uh, the, the cave girls and stuff. So it was a lot of, BDSM style women and then the two hosts and everything. And I didn't talk to anybody like almost the entire time. I talked to the guy who plays the fact rat a little bit just when I first got there, but nobody knew that this was what I had chosen to be my bachelor party for myself. (laughs) But we got up to red bluff. We did the wedding and then we had gone to the same restaurant in town for like every meal while we were there for the couple of days before the wedding. And then we went there by ourselves after that we had, had food and stuff, but we were just so tired and so exhausted. We went to this restaurant. It was just me and Aaron. And uh, she got a, I think she got a porterhouse or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I got a burger. And we were just so relaxed after that. It was like, it was just, we were so done with our day. And then we went back to the hotel. We did not have sex, but she ate the entire cake topper herself. <laughs> <laughs> just that's like awesome, butchered though. the hell out of it. That's and then though. that's like that's bliss. Why, why stress yourself out with uh, you know like bungee yeah. jumping out of a whatever you know all these crazy weddings? Yeah, we didn't have a honeymoon though because we couldn't afford it. We could barely afford the wedding. Although we wound up making money on the wedding with what everybody gave us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we we stayed that night in the hotel. I think we stayed one more night after that. Everybody else had left, and then we went home. And my parents, who had driven out to California, came and visit us for a little bit during a few days. And then it was just like trying to find work after that. But it, our wedding was, we considered it perfect because it was exactly what we wanted because it had nothing to do with what anybody else wanted as much as like we wanted it to be approachable. We wanted it to be fun and just intimate. And it was like probably 30 people tops. Um, and the invitations I had written up, the the save the dates myself and everything. So they're really cute. And they've got our pictures on us. We did, took some pictures at our kitchen table and, and put them up there like a calendar thing. Uh, but it looks like when you go to get your pictures taken at the boardwalk and you have like those four shots, that's how we did it. Oh, that's cute. And then uh, a couple years later, two of our best friends who went to our wedding had decided that that's what they wanted to model their wedding after. Uh, now, they did it more local and it was bigger. They had a lot more people and they had um, the the husband, Scott, his nephew DJed it. So they had actual music and dancing and things. And it was a lot of fun, but it was just really sweet that they liked our wedding so much. And yeah. then they had Aaron and I 
perform the ceremony. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, yeah. So that, that made us feel even more like we did the right thing. And what's the, what's the, what's the phrase? Plagiarism is the sincerest form of flattery. Something like yes. That. Yeah. Yes. See? That's all uh, good. Did you guys know this? Did you guys know your own wedding stories? No, I don't think we've ever talked about it. Mm -mm. I, I think Matt secretly doesn't actually have a wife because you <laughs> never see yeah. her. Just once in a while, I just play angry yelling in the background at dogs. I think it's just a real doll that he just like pulls out every <laughs> once and dances in front of the like Kevin screams. in Home Alone. Yeah. And just... yeah. Well, if I ever get married, which is probably never going to happen, um, if I ever find somebody who can tolerate me. Uh, you guys should come and and I'll be there live from my wedding. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'll be there. In <laughs> marriage of terror, heartbeat. Um, do we get to talk about the parts that didn't go the way that we wanted to to now? Can we save that for another episode? Because I am beat. I, yeah, no, 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 no. That's fine. Right. That's fine. But Jack, you still have to rate the movies. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, he three, did. Three point oh. five and uh, and a three. 3. With a 0.5 margin, margin of, of error. error. That's right. I have a so margin of error. Be, in so I might go down to a 2.5 for split. I might go up to a four from Unbreakable. Nope. But nope. I don't. I don't. I, I'm quantum. I give quantum ratings. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you jump into the middle of the movie, and and Al tries to get you back out by punching the buttons on the whole time. He's hoping that maybe the next the next rating is the last. Yeah, my, my Schrodinger's ranking. I'm going to steal that and use that on my own podcast. All right. You can contact us by leaving us a voicemail at 805-328-3966. You can email us at pod at gncast.com. You can leave us a message on the website. You could follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, but you won't. They should. They should They're not me. going to. You can follow the. You could subscribe on iTunes, but you won't. They could. They should. Yeah, but they're not. Stitcher, Google Play, any which whichever one you're not going to follow us on. That's available. Well, uh, to be fair, I don't follow you on any of those. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> you can leave us a review at bit.ly slash pot review, but you're not gonna. No, uh, no, all no, subscription no, options no. and links can be found at gncast.com slash subscribe, but you're not gonna. <laughs> Finally, you can join us on Facebook for the entire network called uh, the Galactic Network, but you won't. Actually, there's quite a few people who do follow the Galactic Network. It has nothing to do with us, I'm sure. No. Fuck well, what no. kind of quality? Uh, what kind of quality uh, stuff do you tweet out with the podcast and Twitter uh, account? What kind of you could get good horror movie gifts? You should ask. Uh, funny should, hashtags. Yeah, what, should, what do we get? What's what do we get from the uh, from your Twitter? Besides, do you just silence. literally just link out when there's new episodes? I don't even do it that often. Yeah, seriously. I think he likes people who mention us <laughs> without mentioning the. Because I feel like himself. I have to. So what I tried to do back in the day, and I, I, I no longer keep it up, but I'm trying to get back into it, was I was like, I'm going to devote 15 minutes a day to the podcast no matter what. 15 minutes. This was when we were really like every, you know, we were doing yeah. two episodes. A week. And all that would, most of that would just be like going on Twitter and either like retweeting a, a listener or just coming up with a funny Simpsons gif or commenting on one of the popular hashtags with the Simpsons gif. Just I remember seconds. getting a newsletter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that we have the Got newsletter is... That's all, Dan. I, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do much with that. But uh, it's, it's, I don't, I, you know, if, if you did that with your Twitter, I bet you you'd see your followers spike, because there is a horror movie community out there that mm -hmm. haven't found you yet. Just like I don't know why every time a, a discussion online uh, for this about how The Simpsons isn't good anymore comes up, I don't know. We've we have not done our jobs where we don't come up at all, like on the thread. But uh, it, you know, you got to market yourself. Right. Do a horror movie gif. Give me a horror movie gif. Tomorrow's you know, I, I use the Facebook page every once yeah. in a while, but it's mostly to promote someone else that's friends with us. Like if I see PJ has got something going on, I try to post it to the Facebook page when I see it. Uh, so if I see stuff. some of Tori's articles, that kind of stuff, because it people have been so supportive of us and this show that I just want to support them back. And and yes. I feel like the people who listen to the show, listen to the show. And, and if they're not into social media and shit, it's not like we're good at that stuff, yeah. um, but thank you for listening. That's the important thing for oh, that. Yeah. But if no, I can, if I can say something good. like, "Hey, our friend Anthony has got his new movie coming out," and and point it at anybody who might pay attention to our page, that's what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. And that's a good incentive for people, for your listeners to listen. They don't have to get a, a, a silly gif or anything, but if you like podcasts of terror, and you might like their friend shows, so your word should be bond, or at least a, a good suggestion. Yeah. So people, so I, 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 if there is one listener, I want to get you one extra follower. I want to see if you have one follower. Let's just stick with Twitter. Keep it simple. Okay. Uh, I want you to have one additional follower by the time you have another new episode. So I am beseeching, if you are listening to this and you have Twitter, 
and you're like, I could follow him, but you know, who cares? I, I get it. We all have our shows like that. But I'm telling you, if you are one of those people in that majority, eh, just go on, give him a follow. It's not going to kill anybody. Hmm. Yeah, that, that should be your motto. Podcast of terror. It's not going to kill anybody. Yeah, it's not going to kill anybody. <laughs> All right, I want to see if I can get you that one follower. You're probably going to lose followers. I think we're going to get more followers (laughs) if we actually kill people. All right, here's here's what... Okay, I'm going to look right now to see how many followers we have on Twitter. What's our number before my proclamation went out? Yep. By the way, we're most likely to get new followers uh, when we have a guest on that we haven't had on before because then they'll follow us. There's that. (laughs) I'll see that you don't have that this time. Yeah, then we we have Jack on for the 15th time. Oh, my 15. My I actually don't know. Let me check. Um, we have 211 followers on Twitter. All right, let's get it to 212, baby. Boiling um, point. Jack. I do love the fact that Jack was here for 150th, though. Oh, this uh, is our one. It does work. Yeah, it does work that way. Jack, one, two, three, oh. four, five. I believe, you, I believe this is 12. Hey, Baker's dozen minus one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I have to go. I'm losing it. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, this is number twelve for you, so we'll we'll, we'll make it to fifteen one way or another. Um, but yeah, Jack, where do you want people to find you? Uh, you could. I need some followers on Twitter actually. For the first time, I, I I'm following more than getting followers, and it's been bother- It's only like by five or six, and it's been bothering the shit out of me, my OCD. So uh, I want them back to matching equal. So I need like six or seven new followers. Jackie No Breaks and is on Twitter. Jackie and No Breaks. J a c k i e n o b r a k e s because I don't stop, just keep going. <laughs> listen to worst episode ever in nineties percentile. Also, oh yeah, yeah, my podcast. Yeah, go listen to those. And maybe Gremlins Three. <laughs> the nice thing about those podcasts is they are both evergreen shows. There's no reason to feel like you're coming in at the wrong time because it's not about keeping oh, up with the symptoms I... month to month. It's keeping up with the symptoms as as the worst shit they've ever done. And uh, 90s percentile, 90s already happened. Guess what? All you can our, go and listen to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But all of our inside jokes build on one another. So that's true. Uh, so you also have you to listen to the all of them in order. Yep. <laughs> I it's don't worth make it. it easy. I don't make it easy. That's why I'm single, and that's why I don't have any podcasts at the moment. I don't make it easy. Uh, Corey, where, uh, what are you? Do whatever you Corey's want. Corey's at, uh, come on, Corey is at, uh, I Captain know Temerity I know, on I know, Twitter. I, I know all your names by heart because I'm on Twitter so much. Yeah, it's no, Captain, but... Captain Temerity on Twitter. It's C. Christian Scott on Instagram. Uh, C with a period after it. Uh, my Twitter, I still don't have access to. Wait, what? Uh, I lost access to Twitter when my I switched cell phones recently, and I couldn't get them to uh, accept me. I sent in to tech support. It's been a couple months now. They haven't given me access back. And I feel uh, a huge weight off my shoulders of trying to pretend to like Twitter for the last 10 years. I don't give a flying fuck. Uh, so I'm, I'm more than OK with it. Last week, I was talking to our guest about TikTok, of all things. And it's not like I'm somebody who's getting around on TikTok. Yeah, I signed up I'm for TikTok like for like three this. days. Yeah, exactly. It, it's like, so what? There's a billion social media things out there. Uh, and I'm not good with any of them except Facebook because that's where my family is. I don't recommend anybody who's not on Facebook to get onto it. Um, can I tell you? If you're uh, smart, you'll leave. Can I tell you, I saw a really funny. I don't know what TikTok really is, or I've used it, but I Just, saw a really funny sh- meme sh- on sh- Twitter that said. Um, if you're trying to use TikTok like it, TikTok like it's Vine, it's just like in post-apocalyptic movies when people are doing puppet shows and burnt-out TVs. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and I thought that was such a brilliant comparison. That is pretty good. Like I don't know what TikTok is, but I already now have an idea of what it is based on that uh, that metaphor. It's like 15 seconds of of mouthing to music or whatever, or or scenes from movies. It's it's just basically it's mimicry, but then they have a live aspect of, of people come on there and talk. They have. You can do a whole video yourself that can be stretched past that fifteen seconds if you want, but it's 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 just it's like what Vine was. Right, right, right. All right. The well, best I thing probably, I probably don't have time to. No, you don't. The best thing on TikTok was people. It was it would play the beginning of the YMCA song, and then they would take something out of the fridge and oh, walk. Yes. And I walked up to someone, and as soon as the song would kick in, they would throw it at them. It was, you would hear like the slap of the cheese hitting the mm-hmm. face. Like I saw somebody running cheese underwater in the sink and then walking through the house. And then all of a sudden you hear the young man slap yep. and the cheese would just be in that person's face. I don't know why that cracks me up every time. That is the whole reason I stayed on TikTok for three days. 
<laughs> TikTok for me is mostly it's just like Instagram. I just like everything with cats and dogs. Yes. All right. Let's let's wrap this up so Jack can go to the couch. <laughs> I have to. Well, actually, it's a, it's a couch right now. Well, I can turn it to my bed. Yeah. Yeah. You just you go <laughs> thirty six inches behind you. Keep it on this pulpit. Um, Corey, do you have anything you want to push, or did we cover it for you? Uh, hey, our guest next week, Phil Rude, is is going to be on, and uh, Phil's a friend of mine for a number of years, and I was on his podcast recently, but he just launched a comic book on Webtoons, uh, not a comic book, but uh, like pages of a comic story on Webtoons, and it's, uh, it's a sci-fi thing with a cat. He's probably going to talk about it next week, so he'll be able to give the URL and all that, but uh, Phil's a great guy, so you should definitely check him out, and he's a really talented artist. So that's what I'm looking forward to, and that's what I'm enjoying this week is Phil's stuff. Don't forget your extra Twitter follower so that you have that to look forward to this week, too. <laughs> <laughs> you have to Jack, you're going to have to remind me at, at next week to make sure that we have 212. I'm not going to remind you. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to remember either. That's why. Yeah. God damn it. It'll useless. be great. That's fun. This uh, is why it's so important to us to get an extra Twitter follower so we can, <laughs> so we can not pay attention if it happens. Yeah. All yeah. right. It's funny that the generation of burnouts is the generation that that brought podcasting into the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we love podcasting, but we're also fucking tired. <laughs> we got jaded fast. <laughs> um, yeah. Because 150 episodes. All right, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and untapped at Mental Lifeguard. Next, so Corey already said it. Next week, what we're doing? We're watching the yeah, descent yeah, with Phil better. Rude. He should do this stuff. He's much better at it than you. I've I asked him to, and then he yeah, doesn't have a TV, a TV large enough to be able to read it from across the room. So he made me do it. <laughs> we're gonna well, we're gonna get him a teleprompter. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> When he moved back to California, or when he moved back to Michigan from California, we lost all of our Amazon affiliate income. I wanted to buy a huge scoreboard. It was like a hundred bucks, and it was this gigantic score scoreboard. And I wanted to make it our sixty uh, second timer, sixty minute timer. Oh, it, it's one of the main. It's one of the many many reasons I now realize I should have never left We Studios. It was a big. It was a huge mistake. I mean, I I've saved thousands of dollars that I, like I don't know what I, I don't know how I could have pulled off staying there. But I, there's a bunch of reasons why I should have, and one of them is I would have been able to convert uh, permit. I would have been able to make a permanent stu- studio space with my girlfriend gone, mm-hmm. and I would have had that clock, and I was I was ready to buy it. Oh, it would have been so cool. But well, well, one day we'll have the studio of our dreams, boys. One day. One day. Yeah. When you move to Wisconsin or Michigan, because <laughs> I am What's not. The, what, is there a state in between? Minnesota. Nope. There's a lake in between. Right, I'll move to the lake. I'll be that. Jack, Jack just gonna live on a on a I'll water on a lake boat in the middle of the lake, and there'll be a or line a down. It, and half will be Corey, and half will be Matt. Yep. And I'll be equidistant. In the middle, we fuck. We have a very <laughs> small island next to our house. You can live on. It's it's teeny, but it's probably bigger than your apartment right now. I, mean, I think everybody who listens to the show and has gotten to know me knows the whatever whatever my end is. It's going to end up with me like alone on some island. <laughs> it was always that was the the destiny all along. All right, so that's going to do it for another episode of the podcast. Here we will talk to you guys next week. Stay scary, everybody, on Twitter. Bye.